everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make it this lady's top right here now it is easy to adjust to any size body because we i'm going to show you how to do it by the measurement of your waist so um you can adjust it to fit a child or to a larger adult um now it is made with two panels that are sewed together so they're sewed together here at the shoulders and then you have your neck opening um you have your sleeve opening and then it's sewed together at each side and i chose to leave about three inches on each side unsewn to adjust for my hips to go around my hips if I, I think if i would have sewed it all the way it would have been kind of tied on my uh hips but you know you can sew it all the way up now um i will tell you i'm not going to give you there's no stitch uh i'm not going to be giving you stitch counts it's kind of only measurements so um you've seen how it looks on me where it all reaches on me i am five foot three that's barely so you can make it as long or as short as you want but remember in those photos you see I am a five foot three and usually on a shirt of this style I would wear a medium um, so if that will help you out any as a way it looks on me okay let's go ahead and get started okay let me measure it for you real quick now I don't feel comfortable giving you my waist measurements and that's fine i'm just going to tell you how big about how my big my piece is so i told you i was about five three so mine's from the neckline to the bottom it's about 23 inches okay now from the shoulders to the bottom is about 25 and a half so you can go by that uh width wise i'll give you the width is about 17 inches um, and that's with it all sewn up. So um, that's that's how in the measurements of mine. That's what it looks like. So for this project, I used Lion Brand watercolors, which is a bulky number five. Now it is a thick bulky number five. You do not have to use this yarn. Um, now you if you don't use a thicker bulky file like I did the stitches might not have that uh, you see how some kind of pop up if you choose to use a regular you know thinner bulky five or even a four weight it might lay flat more flat and that's fine that's perfectly fine I mean it's not it's not really a see-through stitch that much maybe a bit but um, I wasn't wearing a shirt underneath mine in the picture I only had my bra on so um that would be the only uh difference as far as looks the reason why the stitches are kind of popping out of the 3d effect is because the yarn is thicker so um the color i use is called wild pansy and you, for my size i used about five cakes at 164 yards each of course if you make it bigger you'll need more now, like I mentioned, you can use a four weight. You just would need to chain to your desired amount. Okay, so, and then I'm going to be using a size N, which is a nine millimeter. Some ends are 10 millimeter. E either one of those would work. And that is what I use with this um, thick bulky five. If you're gonna use like a four weight, I would recommend using like a six and a half millimeter. Okay. Um, I also would recommend maybe using, if you can find some type of yarn that maybe has a little bit of stretch to it, you know, that might work out because uh, it is a little bit of a form-fitting shirt. Okay, so measurements. What we're going to do, since it's done in two panels, uh, it'll ha be, ha have to be, you'll take your measurement of your waist and you'll divide it by half. So we'll do a pretend measurement here. Say you have a 30-inch waist, then you would want to chain a chain of about 15 inches or 15 and a half inches i'd probably do the 15 and a half just to be give you some room for sewing um say you have 
bigger waist. Say you have 52 inch waist, then you'd want to do 26 and a half inch chain. Now make sure your chain is pulled tight when you uh, you make your chain, you pull it tight and it measure it and you want to make it half of, what, of your waist measurement and then add another half inch to it, okay? That's how you do your measurements. You want to make it for a child? Waist. I don't know how big. Say 20 inch waist. Make a 10 and a half inch chain. And then you make two panels the same, which will come out to um, one inch over your waist, but that'll take um, account for any sewing that shrinks it up or whatever or whatnot. So anyways, that's how you take the measurements. So you can do that with any size yarn you want. Remember, um, it doesn't have to be the yarn that I used. Okay, so once you got your, start, your starting chain, um, <clears throat> of a multiple of five plus two now we're going to start the stitch so row one we are going to do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook now remember we do not count the one that's on our hook so we go into not this first one but the second one and single crochet and now we will after that single crochet we're going to start the repeat of the row we're going to chain three one two three now we're going to do a double crochet of four together over the next four stitches. So we are going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, and draw up a loop, and yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. I wanna do that four times over four stitches. So that was my first one. I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna, in the next stitch. I'm gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through the first two loops. So that was two times. Yarn over and go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. That's three times, one more time. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. I will have five loops that remain. Yarn over and go through for all five loops. I always give it a little tug, chain one, to lock it into place. Now I'm going to put a single crochet directly into the next stitch. Just like that. And that will end the repeat of this row. So we will start again by chaining three. One, two, three. Now we're going to do our double crochet four together over the next four stitches. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two again go and yarn over go into the next stitch draw up a loop yarn over and go into yarn over and draw through the next two loops again yarn over go into the next stitch draw up a loop yarn over go through the first two loops one more time yarn over go into the next stitch draw up a loop Yarn over and go to the first two. Five loops will remain. Yarn over and go through all five. Tug it, give it a little tug. And then you chain one to lock it into place. And then we're gonna single crochet directly into the next stitch. And this is the repeat. I'm gonna repeat all the way across to the end of the row. I'll do it one more time. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three. We're going to do our double crochet four together over the next four stitches. So we will yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops. Again, yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. One last time. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two loops. So I did that over four stitches. I have five loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all five loops. And chain one to lock it into place. And then single crochet directly into the next stitch. And then you start again by chaining three. 
and I'm going to repeat this pattern until I get to the end of the row. All right, I have come to the end and you should have enough uh, stitches to equally complete a repeat. So I just did my double crochet four together and I will chain uh, one to lock it. And then I have one stitch left, well, which I will a single crochet in and that would end the repeat that we were doing. And that is row one. Now rows two and three are the repeat rows for this pattern. It's not hard a pattern at all. It's actually really pretty easy. Um, the pattern itself is. So we're going to start off row two by chaining five. One, two, three, four, and then five. And then we're going to turn our work. Okay, we're going to start off by putting a single crochet into the first cluster stitch here. So when you turn it over and look at it at the right side, um, I like to put my single crochet right in this little small spot. So turn it back around. Right there. Go ahead and put a single crochet. Just like that. So now we're going to start the repeat of row two. We're going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. And now we're in this chain three space here. We're going to do a double crochet four together. All together into this chain space. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing we did down here, except we're just going to put it all into the chain space. So we're going to yarn over, go through that chain space, and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops. Again, we want to do that four times. That was number one. Again, draw, uh, yarn over, go through the chain space, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops, yarn over, go through the chain space, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops. There's three times, one more time, yarn over, go through the chain space, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two, five loops remain, Yarn over and go through all five. Tug it. Chain one to lock like that. And the, then we are going to put a single crochet into the next cluster right over here. So here's the single crochet from the previous row. I kind of like to go in this little bitty spot here. And single crochet. And that'll end the repeat. So let's go ahead and do it again. We'll start by chain three. One, two, three. Jump over here to this chain three space. And we're going to do our double, cro double crochet four together cluster. So we're going to yarn over. Go in to the chain space. Draw up our loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops. Remember we need to do that four times. So that was number one. There's two times, three times, four times, five loops remain, yarn over and go through all five loops, chain one to lock it, and then we're going to skip the single crochet here and single crochet directly into the next cluster. I like to go in this little spot here. Some people go here. I like to go in this little tight area. You I mean either one would work, but I go in that little tight spot. Now this is a pattern I'm going to repeat until we get to the end of the row. Again, I will chain three. So it's very similar to what we did before. And in the next chain three space, I'm going to do a double crochet four to get a cluster. Five loops remain, yarn over, go through all five, chain one, and single crochet into the next cluster. So you skip this single crochet, and right here in this next little spot, put single crochet into that. And then we repeat again by starting with our chain three. 
So we're going to go ahead and repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. All right, I'm coming to the end of row two. Um, I just finished a repeat, so I'm going to go ahead. You see I have one last chain space left. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one. I'm going to chain three because I just single crocheted there into that last um, double crochet cluster. Now I'm going to do a double crochet cluster into this chain space. chain one to lock it and then I'm going to end the round by double crocheting right down here into this single crochet try to get to both loops of it if I can there we go so double crochet into that last stitch and that will end a row two and that's what it starts to look like. It's actually pretty cool with that yarn. All right, so now we will start uh, row three. We are going to chain one and turn our work. We are going to uh, single crochet into the first stitch so right here on top of this double crochet we're going to put a single crochet and then we're going to single crochet into the next cluster so here's the cluster remember i like to go right there into that little bitty space so right into that single crochet now we're going to start the repeat of the row by chaining three and into this chain space we're going to work a cluster again so right into this chain space we'll work our double crochet four together cluster chain one to lock it and then we will skip the single crochet here and single crochet into the next cluster so this tiny little space here put a single crochet and that's the repeat for row three again we're going to chain three and in the next chain three space we will do our double crochet four together cluster chain one to lock and single crochet into the next cluster so here's a single crochet from the previous round I go on to this little spot here like that and then we're going to repeat again by chaining three so I'm going to keep going until I get to the end of row three all right I have made it to the end here I just did my last uh double crochet cluster here in my last chain three space now I'm going to chain one to lock and I'm going to end my row by just doing a single crochet in this chain five here at the end so just I'm just going to go right through it and single crochet and that will end row three so that's all it is now is a repeat of rows two and three it's cool how this yarn's uh, made it pop out like that. I don't know for certain if it would do that with a pull weight or not, or a three weight, but that's interesting. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to repeat rows two and three until we get the uh, top or the vest as long as we want it to be. Um, so I'm going to continue going. I'll put time stamps for rows two and three in the comment section. Look for those there. And then I'll let you know how many total rows I do uh, for, my, for my top. Okay. So you want to make your piece as long as you want to make it. Make sure you stop on an odd number of rows. So my length of mine right now is 23 inches. Remember, 
longer, shorter, it's completely up to you. But you make sure that you stop on an odd number of rows. Now I'm going to do um, a little bit at the top here. So I'm going to do two more rows, but they're not going to be complete rows. They're going to form the neckline. So you stopped on an odd number. You got your piece as long as you want it to be. Let's go ahead and chain one and then <clears throat> turn our work. my camera down a little bit so you can see better sorry about that and i want to acknowledge i know that my fingernails are stained i dyed yarn so i apologize if they are <coughs> grossing you out but anyways chain one and turn go into the first stitch as usual single crochet go into this little spot of the cluster as usual and single crochet now this is uh going to be different for depending on what size that you want to do but we'll go ahead and repeat our pattern so we chain three and go ahead and work our cluster into the next chain three space so we're kind of just repeating our pattern chain one and then single crochet into the next cluster chain three and in the next chain three space i am going to work a cluster like that chain one now this is where it will be different i did two clusters and i i'm not going to do any more that is the <clears throat> area that's going to be on my shoulders now if you made your piece wider you're going to need to go over a few more rows until it fits across your shoulders but you want to make sure you leave a neckline so my piece I am going to use two clusters for the shoulder on each side. I will have two clusters. And then my neckline will be one, two, three, four, five clusters. Um, so you want to leave your neckline for every any size between the five and six clusters. Something like that. So however many, and make sure you do both sides equal so i'm leaving two clusters on this side and two clusters on, on this side to make my shoulder so make sure you have the same amount of clusters on both sides uh, for your shoulder area and then your neckline can be you know somewhere in between a five and six clusters to, you know would work uh for any size so i'm going to end because i just did two clusters there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to single crochet into this next cluster now, if you're making it bigger, you continue across if you want to do three clusters um, or four clusters. It depends on how big, you know, your shoulder area is. Now, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go across this one more time. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a chain of three and turn my work. And I'm just going to continue the pattern we've been doing. So I'm going to go into this next chain three space and work a cluster. So there's one. And then single crochet into my next cluster there like normal. Chain three. Cluster into my next single crochet. Chain one, and then I'm going to end the round by double crocheting into my first single crochet. And that will be that. Okay. Now you can tie that off. Now what you need to do is turn it back around 
to the very front again to where we started and now I'm going to come over here to I, I have my two clusters here for the neckline you can see I need to do the same thing over here but it'll be done just a little bit differently so here's my two clusters if you're doing three or four over that's fine um, you start in the uh, chain one or the cluster space of whatever however far many clusters you're going so since I did two on the other side I'm gonna do two here so here's one here's two I want to start my yarn in that place that we always put our single crochet like that and I'm going to chain one now I'm going to single crochet back into that spot. Now remember, depending on how many um, clusters you're doing for each of your shoulder piece, it's basically the same. You just do more clusters. Um, then I'm going to chain three. And do my cluster into this next chain three space. And do my single crochet into this next cluster. Chain three. Cluster into my next chain three space. So as you can see, it's just the same pattern. Just make sure you leave five or six clusters there in the center for your neckline. Now right here, I'm going to go ahead and end by single crocheting right here in this chain five space like always now what i'm going to do one more row across i'm going instead of chaining five i'm only going to chain three this time and turn my work <clears throat> and then i will single crochet like always into the very first cluster and i will chain three so the only difference there was I chained three in the beginning instead of five and now I'm going to work my same pattern. I'm going to work my cluster into my next chain three space. Single crochet into my next cluster. Chain three. Cluster into my next chain three space. And then I will chain one to lock it. Now I'm going to end by slip stitching into this single crochet right here. I'm sorry. I'm going to end by single crocheting into the top of the single crochet. I apologize. Like that. And that will end that side and you can tie that yarn off and we'll see what we got as far as the neckline goes okay so when you look at mine you can see that I have two clusters for each of my arm areas and I got one two three four five open for the neckline now what you want to do is make two pieces the exact same so let me get you another quick measurement. I measured it before I put my um, neck or my sh shoulder area on uh, with the shoulder area on. It's about um, 25 and a half stitches. So something like that. So remember, now we need to make two pieces the exact same, which I have already previously done. And now we're going to sew them together and make a top. Okay, so you want to lay your pieces together to where um, both sides are the same. If there's a side that you like better, um, put it right side up because we will be crocheting and then or we're sewing it together and then flipping it right side out so 
Okay, I'm going to use a yarn needle. Now, first things first, I think I'm going to sew up my uh, top here. Or my shoulders. Um, if you have long tails left over, you can use those to sew your top together. If not, you can load up your yarn needle with a piece of this yarn and sew it together. If there's another way method you know of sewing, that's fine too. So all we're going to do is make sure our two, our, do our best to keep it lined up straight. That's, that's really all you're going to do. And just go through it and sew it together. Now I'm going not going to be working over, over, over. I'm going to be working back and forth across the top. And doing my best just to, you know, the stitches won't line up because the stitches are different because they're opposite sides. Well, mine are anyways. But I said you could do it however you wanted. As long as it gets sewed where it's not gonna come undone, I say it's a successful top. So I have two clusters to sew over from my arm. And then we'll sew down the sides. Now, when you get to the part that um, goes down a bit, sew that about halfway, if that makes sense. There we go. There we go. Now you can see my neck opening there for one side. And I want to do the same on the other. So I'm going to, you're not supposed to do this in the eyes of crochet, but I'm going to tie a couple little knots here because this is the end, going to be the inside of my work. So it doesn't come undone and then I will sew those tails in. Now I just want to move over here to the next side and do the same thing. So I got a long tail hanging here. I'll use it as my uh, string or my yarn to sew up the top. Remember, you might have more to sew if you did more than two clusters across. You know, if you did yours wider than mine, you might have a lot more to sew than me. But all I can say is we just do our best to get this sewed up. The stitches don't match. That's fine. They're not going to match. It's just the way it is. And we just sew it neatly back and forth. Just all sewed up. Not going to come undone. And I'm about to the end of this side. Let me check out my arm space there. It's pretty good. Pretty close to the same as the other side. Yep, looks good. Now I'm at the end here again. I'm going to tie a knot here. Let's keep that between me and you. Because you know knots aren't good in crochet. Supposedly. I don't know. It never done me wrong. I've, <laughs> I've used them a long time. And then you just hide these tails up here that remain. Kind of weave them in the top. Remember, this is going to be flipped inside out. So, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get them hidden. And then all that. And now we need to sew down the sides. 
Now, uh, this is another spot that will be different depending on the size that you made is your armhole. My suggestion to be would be to try this on um, right now since the top uh, is sewed up and you mark off where you want to put your armhole. Whether it be 4 inches, 5 inches, 6 inches, 7 inches, depending how low down you want your armhole to be. Maybe you're going to wear a shirt under it and you want your armhole to be really low so your shirt shows. Maybe you don't want to wear anything under it and you just want a normal size armhole. That is completely up to you. But once you figure out where you want your armhole, mark it and you mark the same spot on the other side. That way it's the same size. Okay, I tried mine on and I decided to make an armhole that is approximately six inches so right here i will uh mark i'm just gonna put a stitch marker through these so i know that's where my armhole is gonna be if you do you know bigger size uh your arm if your arms are a little thicker or like i said um you want it to be longer wherever you want your armhole to be that's where you make it and make sure you do it the same on the other side. Now, as far as sewing it up, you just load up your your uh, hook. And we sew it together the same way we did the top. It's pretty easy. Okay, I'm going to leave this open for my armhole. So, I'm just going to go down and keep it. Try to keep it lined up the best I can. But they are on opposite sides, so they won't line up perfect. But uh, every once in a while, you stop sewing and, and take a look and make sure. Oops, that was supposed to go over. Oh, well. Make sure uh, it's lining up to where you're, you're going to be equal at the bottom. I'm going to leave about three inches of my bottom unsewed like that that's your preference if you want to do that you can leave more you can leave less or you can sew it all the way up it's your shirt not mine you may get to fit your body into your likings so I me I want it to be about three inches of it opened on both sides at the bottom you may not want that and that is completely fine so I'm just going to continue sewing back and forth like this until I get about three inches at the bottom left and then I'll tie off and then I will mark my uh, space on the other side uh, for my armhole and the exact same size and sew it up on the other so the other side up and I'll leave three inches at the bottom on that like I said as long as it gets sewed up to where it's not gonna come undone that's all that really matters and it's, you're going to try to sew it as neatly as possible. So I'm going to keep working. I'm going to get my sew, this side sewed up down to three inches. And then I'm going to mark off my other side, uh, like I said, with my armhole in the exact same place as this one. And so it up down or sew it down to three inches and then I'm going to hide all my tails and then we'll see what we need to do next okay, I got both my sides sewed up and now I'm gonna flip it <coughs> inside out or actually right side out and there it is I still got some tails to sew in but finished it is doesn't look too dang bad for a quick summer top because it didn't take very long to make. I like it. Now, one thing that you can do is, if you if you want, you can go around the top with single crochet. I kind of like the looks of the chain, so I'm going to leave it. You can go around the bottom you want and clean up the edging. I kind of like the way it looks with the shell sticking out. But, you know, that's just things you can do. You can go around the edge with single crochet, clean it up. Again, I'll probably just leave my, my yarn is so busy um, that me going around the edges is probably not even going to make too much of a noticeable difference. But I'm going to hide some tails and then my top is complete. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope that you were able to follow along. If you make this, 
show me a picture on my Instagram. I'm going to put a link to my Instagram in the comment section and, and to my uh, description box. Follow me. Tag me in all your crochet work. It doesn't just have to be mine. Show me all your crochet work. Hashtag bag of day crochet. I love to see it. And until next time, don't forget, to, well, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And until next time, have a good day and please stay safe. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this lady's top here. Now I would consider this um, intermediate because you need to know how to sew stuff together, panels and stuff. So the stitch itself isn't really hard. It's mainly triple crochet and double crochet, but that's what it looks like. Um, I got it for size large, which is what I'll be doing in the video. Extra large, 2X and 3X. I have and that I have it for no more sizes. That's the only sizes that I have available, but it looks the same on both sides. It is sewn up here, sewn down the sides. It's got a split here just for decoration. You can sew it all the way down if you prefer. And then that's the shoulders are sewed up separately right here on both sides. Now it's a form fitting shirt, as you can see on my mannequin, if you don't like form fitting. You might want to um, go up a size. I have all the measurements down below in the description box. So a large is uh, size 38 around. Um, extra large would be 40. Um, 2X would be 42 inches. And 3X would be 44 inches around. Okay, lengthwise, if you're doing a large, it's going to be about uh, approximately from the shoulder down 25 inches um, an extra large will be approximately 26 inches and the 2x and 3x will be approximately um, 27 inches but of course you can do adjust the length to make it as long or as short as you like okay for the gauge it's 16 um, rows of single crochet equals four inches and then 16 single crochet across equals four inches so okay some people follow gauge yeah 16 and then 16 is four by four okay for this project i am using lion brand comfy cotton blend it is a 50% cotton, 50% polyester blend. There's seven ounces or 200 grams per cake, 392 yards. It is a, a lightweight three. I think it's a little bit thicker of a lightweight three, but um, this is what I had. I did the large and this is my second ball. So I, or second cake. So I think two cakes will be enough for any of the sizes that I have available. So, and there's two, 392 yards per cake. The color I'm using is called Poppy. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Now remember, down below in the description box, you'll find all the starting chains and stuff like that for the different sizes. Hopefully I don't confuse you too much. It's hard to record a video and have a bunch of different sizes available, but I'll do my best. Now, remember I said I'm going to be doing the size large in my video. So, for size large, now this stitch is done in a multiple of four, in case you want to use it for something else, but for size large, you want to chain 64. Extra large, you chain 68. 2X, you chain 72. 3X, you chain 76. Okay, now once you get your correct chain amount done, what we're going to do is we are going to put one single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then we're going to put one single crochet in every single stitch until you get to the end of your row. Just like this. So row one is just one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Okay, once you make it to the end of row one, if you're doing a size large, you'll have 63 stitches. 
extra large you'll have 67 stitches 2x you will have 71 stitches and 3x you'll have 75 stitches so we're going to go ahead and for row two is we're going to chain four which counts as a triple crochet and we're going to turn our work like that now i'm going to skip two stitches so one two and in the next stitch we're going to do a shell so what we're going to do for the shell is we're going to do skip two we're going to do a triple crochet into the next another triple crochet into the same stitch chain two and then a double crochet into that same stitch that's what i'm calling a shell so it's two triples chain two and two triples now we're going to start the repeat. We're going to skip three stitches now. One, two, three, and we're going to shell into the next. So skip your three, skip, 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 and then in the next, you work a shell. You work three, or I'm sorry, two triple crochets. Chain two, and then a double crochet into that same stitch just like that repeat it again skip three skip 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 shell into the next so two triples chain two and one double and we're going to repeat this until we get to the end of the row skip three stitches shell into the next so skip 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 and then in the next we do our shell two triples chain two and one double so we'll go ahead and repeat this pattern until you get to the end of the row All right, when you make it to the end here, you'll have, three, I just did my last shell and I have three stitches left. Go ahead and skip two stitches and we'll end by putting a triple crochet into the last stitch. So you skip two and triple crochet into the last. And that'll end row two. Now, if you're doing a large, you'll have 15 shells. If you're doing an extra large, you'll have 16, 2x you'll have 17, and 3x you'll have 18. Okay, so, uh, row three is the repeat row, which is a one row repeat for the rest of the main pattern part. So we're just going to chain four, counts as a triple crochet, and turn our work. So we're going to put a shell in each one of these chain two spaces of the previous shell all the way across. So here's the first chain two space. Go ahead and work a shell right through the space. So two triples. chain two and then a double and then we jump to the next chain two space of the next shell and work a shell again right through that chain two space two triples chain two and one double again Jump to the next shell, into the chain two space, work a shell, two triples, chain two, and a double. And that's what we're going to repeat to the end of the row. We're working a shell in the chain space of each of the previous of the shells from the previous row, all the way across until you get to the end of the row. All right, when you make it to the end, just to the shell in your last chain two space, we'll go ahead and end that row by triple crocheting into the top of our chain four right here from the previous row. And you'll still have, if you're doing a large, 15 shells, extra large, 16 shells, 2x, 17 shells, and 3x, 18 shells. And that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to keep repeating row three. So we'll just chain four again, turn our work, 
and we'll do a shell in each of the chain two spaces of the previous shell all the way across. And you always have the same number of shells depending on what size that you make. Now, if you're doing the large like me, you wanna do a total of 24 rows. Extra large, you'll do 25 rows. And 2X and 3X, you'll do 26 rows. Um, and then I'll meet back up with you when you get your appropriate amount of rows done. Okay, once you get um, as many rows as you need for the appropriate size, and you can always make it longer or shorter if you hold it up to yourself and, you know, you want it longer or shorter. That's up to you. But remember, um, it's 24 rows is what we're on now for size large. Um, 25 rows for size extra large. And 26 rows for 2X. And 26 rows for 3X. So, but remember, you can adjust that. And now we are on our last row. So, I'm working the size large, so I got my 24 rows done, and this will be my 25th one right here. So, if we're working a large, with that, which I am, I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. And you'll do the same for the other sizes. You'll just make the sleeve a little bit longer. So, I'm going to go ahead and chain four, like we normally do. And we're going to work a shell into these first three chain spaces of the first three shells. Now this is for the large size. And then one more. Now, this is the large I'm doing, remember. All right, I've worked the three shells here for the large. And then what I wanna do to end it, I wanna skip these two stitches and triple crochet into the top of the next stitch. Now this is the large size, and then you tie this off. Now for the other sizes, you do the same thing, except for you do more shells. So if you're doing the extra large, you'll want to work over four shells and then put four shells and then skip two and triple crochet into the next. For the 2X, you will work over five shells. And for the 3X, you will work over six shells. Remember, all that information will be below in case you uh, forget. So that is is what it'll look like and of course it'll have more shells if you're doing the bigger sizes now we'll come over here to the other side and we're going to do the same thing so since mine's so large i'm going to count in three shell spaces one two three i'm doing three shells remember if you're doing the extra large you'll count in four shell spaces and then five for the two x and six for the three x but since i'm doing a large i'm going to count in three and then you want to start two Here's the shell space, three stitches over. So this one right here, you'll start a triple crochet in this one, and then you'll skip these two, and then you'll work your shell into the first stitch. Does that make sense here? So we'll go ahead and, so I got my three shell chain spaces. See them? One, two, three. I'll skip two, and then I'll start into the next one. So that's where, this is where I'll start my yarn. So we're doing the same thing we did on the other side. We're just working it kind of backwards. So go ahead and start right there and work chain, a chain four. And then you'll skip those two stitches, skip, skip, and then we'll shell into the next stitch. So since I'm doing a large, I'll have three shells here. Remember bigger or more shells if you do the bigger sizes. And then I'll shell into the next chain space here of the next shell. Right. one more. <clears throat> and then you end it the same way that you've been, ended every other row. Triple crochet into that last chain four space. And then that is what it will look like. 
Now I'm not going to tie off. I'm going to go around this whole panel with single crochet to clean it all up. Plus it makes it easier to sew it together. So regardless of what size you're doing, we're going to do the same thing now. So once you get it right, this is what it looks like. You got two spots for the sleeves. I guess it, you call it the sleeves, just the shoulder area. That's a little bit tall, one row that's a little bit taller. And this right here will be the neck area. So now what we're going to do without tying off, we're going to chain one and we're going to work down the side of the, sh the panel. So I'm going to work four single crochets right through this chain space. One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to work four single crochets through the next space. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to work four single crochets through every one of these spaces in between the last stitches here on the end at the end of the row like that and all this is doing is it's going to clean up these edges make them look neater and it's going to make it a lot easier to sew, to sew it together so four into this next space this is the same on every size we're just cleaning up all the edges four into the next space so we're going to work four single crochets in every one of these spaces all the way down the whole side until you get down here at the bottom i'll meet you down here at this last at this last chain space okay i made it down my first side here and i'm at the bottom i got four single crochet there in my last chain space so now i'm going to work across the bottom here putting one single crochet in every stitch except for the very first stitch I'm going to put three single crochet in it that'll just help the corner lay fat flat so regardless of what size you're doing put three single crochet into that very first stitch here on the bottom that and now we'll work across putting one single crochet in every stitch along the bottom So clean up the bottom edge. Like that. So we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch along the bottom of the top. Bottom of the, of the top. The bottom of the shirt. Like that. And then when we get over here, you'll put one single or three single crochets into this last stitch. And then you'll continue working up the other side, putting four single crochets in every one of these chain spaces, just like we did on the other side. So that's what I'm going to do now. One single crochet in every stitch along the bottom until I get to the corner here. Three single crochets into the corner and then four single crochets in each one of these chain spaces all the way up until we get to the top of the shirt. And I will meet you right up here at the last chain space. And then we'll go across the shoulder area and the neck. Okay, I have made it to the top. Here's the top. You can see here's this one row where I have my three shells for my size large. You'll have more shells if you have the bigger size. But what I'm going to do now is in this very first stitch here, I got four single crochet here in this space. In the very first stitch here, I'm going to put two single crochets. Just like that. And now I'm going to put one single crochet into the next stitch. One single crochet through this chain space. One single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One single crochet into the next chain space. And that's what I'm going to do until I get to the end here. Remember, you'll have more shells if you're doing a bigger size. It's one single crochet in every stitch and one single into the chain space of the shell. All right, now when you made it all the way across and you have your last two stitches, you're going to put one single crochet into the last two stitches. 
Now we're going to work down the neck. So I'm going to put four single crochets right here through this chain space. You can spread those out a bit. Now I'm going to put one single crochet into the next chain space. So right here of the next shell. And I'm going to do the same thing. One single crochet in every stitch across the neck here. And one single crochet um, in the chain space of the shell. I'm going to do this all the way across. And this is just cleaning up the neck here. Making it look a little bit cleaner. And you want to do this until you get over here to your last row where your shells start to, where you got your three shells up here. If you're doing a large, four shells. If you're doing extra large, five shells if you're doing the 2x and you'll have six shells if you're doing a 3x so i'll meet you back right over here all right i've made it over here to the other side i did a single crochet into the chain space of my last shell now we don't go into the single into this double crochet that we started in we just jump right over here to this chain space here this space here and we'll do four single crochets so we're doing the same thing we did on the other side And then one single crochet in each stitch and one single crochet into the chain space of each shell here across the top, just the same as we did on the other side until we get to our last stitch. Remember you'll have more shells if you're making the bigger size here. And then when you get to your last stitch here, go ahead and put two single crochets into the last stitch. And then we will end by slip stitching into our first uh, single crochet here on this side. Just like that. And we can tie that off. And now we want to make two panels the exact same way. So this is what it kind of looks like now. Here is the top. Now you can take it and you can kind of uh, spread these single crochets out so they're not looking wavy. They just look kind of wavy because they'll spread out a bit once you get them sewed together and stuff. But here's the neckline up here. So that's what it kind of looks like. So we need two panels the exact same way and then we'll just sew them together. Okay, now once we get our two panels made, we want to make it where, let's see, we sew it together, we're going to sew it wrong side out, so that way when we flip it, it'll be right side out. So as you can see right here, this is one panel, and I have the right side of my stitches facing up right now, and then I'm going to take the other side of my panel. Put it together, make sure your little shoulder areas match up at the top, and you want to put the wrong side of the single crochets facing up. So you got the two right sides of your work facing down like that, and then the two wrong sides are on the outside. And then when we get done sewing it together, we'll flip it right side out. So I'm going to sew it together with a uh, slip stitch now you can use a yarn needle if you want it really doesn't matter how you sew it together as long as it gets sewed together okay now we got our work facing this way here is the shoulders right here okay we're going to start sewing up this side first now we're going to skip for the armholes we're going to sew up the sides before we sew up the shoulders so <clears throat> let's see for size um 
large and extra large. You see these little holes here that we put the four single crochets in each one. You want to skip nine for large and extra large. So you go through and you just count. Make sure to get in both pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we'll start in the tenth hole for the large and extra large. And then for 2x um, and 3x, we'll start in the 11th hole. So go ahead and get your, make sure you're getting the same amount on both sides. Now I'm starting in my 10th hole, remember 10 for large and extra large. And then you start in the 11th hole for um, 2x and 3x. And if you feel like um, you're, you want your armhole bigger, by all means, you can leave as many holes open as you want. Just make sure you get it the same on both sides. So what we're going to do, I'm in my 10th hole for my size. I'm going to start in, two, in the first stitch of that 10th hole. Or somewhere pretty close to the first stitch, the best that you can. So it's this one right here. And what I'm going to do to sew it together, I'm going to go through that first loop only on that first stitch. And then on the other piece, the first stitch in that 10th hole, I'm going to go through the back loop only. Like that. Now, if you want to go through both loops, you can. There's really, it's gonna really no difference. It's just, it's gonna make a little bit of a, I think it makes it look cleaner doing it this way, but either way will work. If you can't get it to work this way, that's fine. So I went through both loops there. And I'm gonna chain one. Now I'm gonna jump to the next two single crochets. I'm gonna go through the first loop of the first single crochet, of the next single crochet, like that on this first piece. And on the other piece over here, I'm going to go through the back loop of it. And then I'm going to slip stitch. And this is what I'm going to do all the way down. So I'm going to go to the next stitch on this first panel and go through the first loop of it. And then the next single crochet on the back panel and I'm going to go through the back loop of it. So you only got two, you're only going through those uh, first loop on this one. The back loop on the other slip stitch and do that again first loop only and then back loop only on the back piece and that's what I'm gonna do all the way down you want to make sure your stitches line up good so they match up at the end. Now I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going to leave a split at the bottom. You don't have to do that. You can you can um, slip stitch it all the way up if you prefer. I'm going to do this all the way down. But I'm going to leave a split here at the bottom. To where I don't sew it together and it splits open. Um, you don't have to do that. Remember you can do it. You can sew it all the way to the bottom if you want. You can leave like an inch split, a two inch split, a three inch split, whatever you want. I'm going to go down to, I'm going to leave approximately, see my holes here, one, two, three. I'm going to go to kind of go in the middle of the third one and leave like a two and a half inch split, something like that. Two and a half, three inch split, just approximately. But you don't have to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and work all the way down slip stitching like I said and I'll meet you down here at the end and I'll show you where I'm gonna stop all right I've made it down and you see here's these holes one two I went stopped about the middle of this third hole up on both sides it's the same and I'm gonna leave that open to flare but you don't have to do that you can go all the way down or whatever you want to do um, and I'm gonna clip that off and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side sewing it together give that a little stretch go to the other side on um, the other side, you'll probably have to start at the bottom and work your way up. So, since I started one, two, in the middle, I ended over there in the middle of the third hole. That's where I'm going to start. I'll work my way up until I get to, I started in my tenth hole for my arms. So, I'll work my way up until I get to my tenth hole. Remember, um, if you're doing a bigger size, you'll need to, uh, 10th hole for the 
large, extra large, and 11th hole for the 2x, 3x. Of course, if you made your armhole bigger, whatever hole you made it to. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way up exactly the same way to make this side match that side. Okay, I've made it. Both sides are the same. Give it a little stretch. Let's sew up the top here. Whoa, sorry about that. Everybody's sick with my camera skills here. All right. I'm going to start in... Bring up our corners here. Okay, here's where we put four single crochets into the corner. Remember that? And then we put two single crochets into the first stitch. We're going to start where we put first two... The, two single crochets into that first stitch we're going to start in that first single crochet there so we're not going to put any into the four that we put on each of these holes so look to where you put your two single crochets into this first stitch you can count here if you want to help you remember there'll be four here so one two three four and then this will be my first single crochet where I, of this stitch where I put two in it I'm going to go through the first loop on it and I'm going to do the same stitch, only the back loop, so, on the other panel, so. It always helps me to count, to find out where I'm at. Just remember, we did four in this, and then two into the first stitch, so. Right here's my first stitch. Go into the back of that. And we're going to sew this up the same way, slip stitching it. So, chain one. Go into the next stitch. Front loop only back loop only of the back panel of the next stitch and slip stitch and I'm going to do this across the top where we did our shells of the shoulder And remember, it'll be uh, longer across the top if you did a bigger size than what mine is. Because I did the smallest size available. The large. Okay, now we're going to go all the way across our shells here at the top. And I'll show you where we're going to end our shoulder. We're going to end in the last stitch. Okay, here's the shoulder. Remember, here's our la my last shell on my shoulder. Here's where we did the four single crochets in that space that kind of formed a little arch of the neck. We're going to stop in the very last stitch here that we worked in. We're not going to go in into any of these four single crochets here. So the last stitch here is where we, where we, where we will end on both panels. They should match up. And then you just tie that off. See, I stopped at the last stitch on both sides. Tie that off and we'll do the same thing. Give it a stretch. Tie it off and we'll do the same thing on the other shoulder, but you just have to start in the opposite direction. So we'll be starting over here so here's our four single crochets that we did on the neck, little neck area, the arch of the neck. We want to start in the first stitch here. So nobody helps me to count up so I can see where I'm at. I'm sitting here staring at it forever. So this one right here. Okay, and then the one first stitch on this piece on the back. Go through back loop on that piece. And then you just sew it together the same way. You want to make this side match the other side. So we slip stitch it across. Going through the front loop on the first panel and the back loop only on the back panel. And we want to do that till we get to the last stitch. 
where we put two stitches in that stitch, remember? We just make it match the other side. We stop at the same spot that we started on the other side. And remember, it's not going to be perfect. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. It's handmade. That's what makes it beautiful. Because it's not going to be perfect. <clears throat> Remember the our stitch here where we put two single crochets in it? On both sides, we stop at that the last the first single crochet we put in there. So we did, remember, we're just making this side match the other side as best as you can. Okay. You got one more for me. It's hard to tell. That's why it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. So, there we go. I think that's about right. And then you tie that off. All right. Now, let's hide any tails we got and then we'll flip it right side out and see what it looks like. All right. I flip my work right side out, hit all my tails, just kind of go along the seam like this, push it out. And then I'm going to go around the sleeves and the neck, clean up them edges, and then we will be done. So for the sleeves, all I'm going to do is single crochet all the way around them, and the same for the neck. So you can start on any sleeve, either sleeve that you want. Okay, I'm going to start kind of down here where they connect. I'm going to go through the first single crochet on this one and the first single crochet on this one and I'm going to single crochet those together so I'm going to chain one I'm going to go back through both of those stitches single crochet and now I'm going to work my way up I split split my two panels I'm putting one single crochet in each of these stitches You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just I'm just cleaning up the seams and the edges a bit. I'm doing this all the way up until I get to the shoulder area. Okay, when you make it up here to the shoulder area, I'm going to go into the last first stitch here that's not sewn together and single crochet. And then I'm going to jump over here to the next stitch here and single crochet. That'll kind of just close up that gap there and make it look a little cleaner. So I'm just putting one single crochet in every stitch. All the way down until we get back here to where we started.
Okay, I made it to my starting point where we single crochet those first two together. I'm just gonna slip stitch into that first single crochet, tie it off, and then I'm gonna do the other sleeve the exact same way. So make sure you do the other sleeve the same. Now for the neck, we're just gonna kinda basically do the same thing. We're just gonna go around the whole neck with a round of single crochet. So you can start anywhere you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right here at the seam. So a couple stitches from the seam. Go through, we're going, remember we're going through both loops now. We're just single crochet. And so chain one, go back into that same stitch, single crochet. And we're gonna single crochet in every stitch around. When you come to the seam, go through the last stitch before the seam, and then just jump over here and go through the first stitch on the, uh, over here and single crochet. Just like that. That way the seam kind of comes together. And then we just continue around, putting one single crochet in every stitch. Do the same thing at the other seam. Work around until you get back to your starting point. All we're doing is cleaning up these edges. Kind of just closing up them seams a little bit to make them look a little neater. So one single crochet all the way around. Get back here. Single crochet over the seam of the other side. One single crochet across the front. Back to where you started. All right, once you make it back around to your starting point on your neck, you just slip stitch into your first single crochet, um, tie that off, hide any remaining tails, and that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoy my tutorial. I think it turned out okay. Wear a tank top or something underneath it. I, you could probably even use it like if you made it out of cotton yarn, like 100% cotton, made it long, a swimsuit cover or something. I don't know, but you can do whatever you want to do with it, or however you want. But I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Check out all my other tutorials. Um, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen right now, there's a playlist of all my other ladies' tops in case you're interested in making anything else. Um, so until next time, have a good day. everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this super simple very easy beginner friendly um top it's just a tank top i mean you can wear it as is like i did in the photos you can wear it underneath a shirt uh whatever you want to do with it you can leave the straps off and make it a uh halter top uh, or two top you can make it longer than mine you can make it shorter than mine. I am five foot three, as you see in the photos, and that's barely five foot three. Um, and mine measures from top to bottom about 18 inches. So the length of your chain is going to be the length of your top. So if you want your shorter, you want to start with a shorter amount of chains. If you want yours longer, then you want to start with a longer number of chains than I did. Remember, I'm barely 5'3". So that's how it looked on me. Now I'm going to give you, the thing is with this, it's very, very easy to adjust to any size woman because it's made with one solid long piece back and forth rows of the length back and forth rows and then till we get the width that we want and then there's one seam that we sew together that runs down the side or you could put it in the back if you prefer wherever you want your seam to lay that's it and then you add the straps if you want which are very easy you make the straps any size that you want and then you sew them on separately if you want to leave the straps off sure that's fine too it's completely up to you but this is very beginner friendly and something very easy and uh quick for um you know someone who's super advanced and just wants to make take a break and make something easy this is it okay so um let's go ahead and get started and i'll show you what i used now i used lion brand pima cotton it is a 100 percent Pima cotton and it is a medium weight number four. 
I do recommend that you use a cotton yarn or at least 50-50 cotton as because it won't stretch as much as acrylic. Now, don't get me wrong, you can use acrylic. Any four weight yarn will work. I'm just saying, um, just remember that acrylic will have more of a stretch on it than cotton. So if you use acrylic, just uh, keep that in mind. And that, that, you know, that could be good for some people. Some people might want that. Now, this is my third skein, 186 yards. I went through about 500 yards for the size that I made. Now, I made it to fit my body. And then I'm going to be using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. Okay, so if you like the length of mine, I chained 67 chains. 67 is what I did for the length of mine, and it made it approximately 18 inches. Remember, barely 5'3". You can chain in any number of chains. It does not matter. There's no multiple for your length. So however long you want your piece to be, that's how long you chain. So I did chain 67. And then what we do, I'm going to show you on a smaller scale, is we do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. Like that. And then we're going to work across the chain and we're going to do one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like this. So when you get to the end of the row, if you're following me, you'll have 65 stitches. Now, if you made yours longer or shorter, you'll have two less stitches than what you chained. So it's very easy from here on out. The row two is a repeat row. We chain one and we turn our work. We are gonna work a one double crochet in the front loop up only of every stitch. So starting with this very first stitch right here, we're gonna yarn over and you see how each loop has two, each stitch has two loops. The one closest to it is the front loop. The one furthest away is the back loop. We want to go through one loop only and we want to go through the front loop. So the one closest to us and we double crochet. And then we're gonna put one double crochet through that front loop only of every single stitch until we get to the end of the row. Now what I like to do to try to keep, sometimes when you're working in just one loop like that, they tend to stretch. What I like to do to try to, what I do to keep, try to keep that from happening is when I go into that one loop and I yarn over and pull through, I'll, I'll hold it right there with my thumb, the loop, so it doesn't stretch that much. And if you know a better way, that's fine. That's just kind of how I keep it from stretching. And we do this until we get to the end of the row. And you'll always have the same amount of stitches. So following along with me, you'll have your 65 stitches. Your last stitch here on row two will be that chain. So just kind of go right into the top of that. And double crochet. Now we're going to repeat it again. We're going to chain one and turn and as you can see it made kind of a, a line there. So we're going to yarn over into this very first stitch we go into the very first loop. That first one's kind of always the hardest to get there. <laughs> and then we work along the chain working one double crochet into each front loop only. And we continue doing this. We'll always have the same amount of stitches for whatever length you made your chain. You know, it's your shirt. You make it however long, however short you want it. And we're gonna keep doing this until we get the measurement of our waist. So, 
I'm not super comfortable telling you the measurement of my waist. So I will just show you what we'll do. So we keep working rows and rows of double crochet in the front loop only, okay? And we just keep doing that. And you wanna do that until your piece measures. You take your uh, tape measure. Every woman's body is different. So this is why it's so easy to uh, ad adapt this to any woman's body. You measure until you around your waist i'm let's just pretend right now we're going to pretend pretend like your waist is you measure your waist and say it's 30 inches okay continue this until your piece reaches 30 and a half inches okay say you're bigger say your waist is 48 inches continue repeating that row until you get 48 and a half inches. Say you're small. Say you want to make it for a child. Say the child has a 15 inch waist. Repeat it until you reach 15 and a half inches in length. This way. Okay? Every woman is different. So you have to measure yourself. I kept trying my piece on, also wrapping it around me. So it's kind of just, you know, you crochet, you measure, try it on, crochet, measure, try it on. And you do that until you get it to the length that you want it, or the width that you want it to be. And then we're going to sew it together. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing here before I show you how to sew it together. When I sewed mine together, if you make yours much longer than mine, you might want to leave a two or three inch slit here at, at the sewing point to uh, accommodate the hips. Because I noticed if mine was much longer, it would have been pretty tight on my hips and the slit would have eased that pressure on the hips. So if you're wanting a longer top than mine, just remember, um, keep a two or three inch slit there to stop stop slip stitching it together right there leave it open and that will accommodate for any tightness around the hips because i don't mention that when i'm sewing that together um so you just continue this until you get your waist measurement plus that half inch like i said um we add that half inch that's just to accommodate for slip stitching it together and everything and um then i'll show you how to slip stitch it up Okay, so once you get your piece as wide as your waist is, um, we all we're gonna all we're gonna do now is slip stitch it together. So take your piece here. Oops, I lost a couple stitches. If you prefer sewing it, you can do that if you want. It's really up to you. But you take your piece and fold it together. Doesn't matter which way you fold it. Both sides look the same. Okay, you're folding it <clears throat> um, the long way. So, here's the end that I started. The very row, the first row that I started. And here's the row that I just left off on. And that's the way I folded it in half. So uh, lengthways, you can see the lines now run vertical. Make it look slimmer, I think. Ain't that right? You got lines that run vertical. I think that's supposed to make you look slimmer. I don't know if that's going to work out for me. But <laughs> we'll give it a go. Okay, so now to slip stitch it together, I'm going to be going through both loops. Uh, so go ahead and go through the very first loop on this piece. And then you go to your other piece over here and make sure you get this very first stitch here that your starting string is connected to. And go through that and slip stitch. And now I'm going to work across. I'm going to go through the next stitch on this piece. And I'm going to match it up with the next pitten stitch on the back piece and slip stitch. 
and I'm going to do this all the way down. Next stitch, and then the next stitch on the back piece, and slip stitch. And then when we're done, we'll flip it right, uh, inside out. Since both sides look the same, it doesn't really matter, you know, which side you start with. Uh, we'll uh, go all the way down until we get to the end, slip stitching it together just like this. A little bright light there, didn't I? I'm sorry about that. And then we'll flip it right side out. And then we'll start uh, on the straps if you want straps. I guess you can leave it as a tube top if you want. But I'm gonna put, I'm definitely, I'm gonna put some straps on mine. Just make sure you match up the correct stitches. That way, when you get to the end, you don't have any stitches left over. And everything lines up perfect. See how easy that is? Very, very easy. And remember, I said you can sew this. If you prefer to use a yarn and, and needle, you can just sew it together that way too. I'm just doing it with a slip stitch because it's just faster this way for me. But I use a yarn and a needle sometimes. All right. I'm gonna flip this out real quick and see what the seam looks like from the other side. Looks good. All right, so I'm gonna continue slip stitching all the way to the top and I'll meet you up there. All right, so I got mine all sewed up there. You can see my seam from the slip stitch. And I went ahead and hid my tails. So I'm gonna flip my work um, right side out now. So now you have your top. Now what we gotta do is try it on and see where we want to put the straps. Now that's all going to depend on how you're going to wear your top because ladies, some ladies wear their tops differently. So this is what you need to do. Now, if you plan on wearing this top as is as a two top, that's fine. You can be done. Um, now, if you want to add straps, it uh, where you put your straps determines on you know every every lady's body's different. Now, if you plan on wearing a bra with this um, you would want to put your bra on first and then try it on and mark off where uh, which with stitch markers or something approximately where you would want your straps to lay now some women don't uh, wear bras um, under shirts like this and if you plan on wearing it without a bra you would want to try it on without the bra and then use your stitch markers or something to mark out approximately where you want your straps to be and then we can adjust and make sure they're equal once we uh, try it on and you know just get a quick estimate of approximately where we want our straps to lay so go ahead and try it on real quick and um, get your measurement of about where you think your straps should go okay so I tried mine on I didn't play stitch markers but I determined I wanted about nine or ten rows in between my straps so I want to make sure I get the same amount on the front as I do on the back so I'm just going to count. Mm. Yep. I'm going to place the stitch marker there. There's nine. So I got nine rows. Now these stitch markers are being placed at the at nine rows for me wherever you want yours to be so actually my straps are going to go on the next row and i want to do that make sure i get the same amount on the opposite side so we have even straps just counting them from your sides line up my pieces here my stitch mark pieces Count my rows in between them. Perfect. Perfect. I did it. Okay, now strap wise. Strap wise. Now, this is something that you're also going to have to measure for. Um, I actually took a tape measure. You can, again, try it on your body. And, you know, you're just going to have to chain and try it on chain and try it on 
or I took a tape measure and I measured where approximately I wanted my straps to lay um, on my chest and um, on my ch not on this but on my chest approximately where I wanted the shirt to fall on my chest and I took a tape measure and I placed it there and I put it over my shoulder and I put it to where approximately I wanted it to uh, rest on my back and then that many that's how many inches I chained um, and I chained it actually one more inch because and you want to make sure your chain stretched to that amount stretch it chain it to the, the amount that you uh, used on your tape measure for make sure you measure your chain stretched out because your straps will they'll stretch if you don't do that first and they'll probably stretch a bit anyways so it doesn't hurt to make them a little shorter because when you get them on um, they, they will stretch a bit anyways so the number that you chain doesn't really matter just make sure you chain the same amount for each side so what we're going to do for the straps is just a basic, basic single crochet strap. You can do, um, I'm going to do one row of single crochets for my strap. If you want thicker straps, you can do two rows. It's up to you. Sure, it's your shirt. But in order to make it look really clean, remember, whatever number here you chained, it really just depends on your body and how low you want your tank to hang. Um, remember, try it on. Um, and... Remember, we're going to be folding it over a bit to sew it together. So add about another inch or so to um, account for that. So what we're going to do to make the chain nice and clean is we're going to be crocheting through the back bump of the row. So we do a single crochet in the second stitch on hook, but flip your work over. Now you see how there are... Um, I stretched it so tight. You see those little bumps in the back? That's what we're going to be going into. That one loop there in the back. That will make a clean chain. So in the second stitch from your hook, flip it over and there's this one loop right here in the back. Go through that and single crochet like that. And then you go to the next stitch. You see that one bump there? It's in the back of your chain. I have my chain flipped backwards now and go into it and single crochet. Here's the front of the chain. Flip your chain and you'll see that one alone loop there or that little bump. That's the one you want to go through and chain or single crochet through it. Just like that. And that's what we're going to do all the way down. That makes the edge of your piece clean. You wouldn't have to single crochet around it again takes a bit more time to do it this way but it's worth it because it makes it look neater so I'm going to continue going through that back bump only all the way down my entire chain and I'm going to make two straps the exact same now remember if you feel like this isn't thick enough and you want it thicker when you get to the end you can turn your work chain one turn your work and go back up again with another row of single crochet just make sure you make your straps um, both of them match exactly the same number of stitches. Okay, now I got my straps made. Both of them the same. I left a long tail for sewing. There will be a lot less stretch if you're using cotton yarn versus acrylic. So this is how I sewed mine on. I sewed, I already got one sewed on. It's very simple. You, the only thing you want to make sure that you do is that you don't um, twist your straps while you're sewing, when you're sewing them on. So... Make sure you sew them on the right side. This would be the back of your single crochet. This would be the front. So sew them on. I'm sewing mine on in the next space over. So I'm going in between. So here's my row. Let me focus in a little bit better. And I'm sorry. Here is where I'm sewing them. Here's the first double crochet here's the second double crochet I'm gonna bring my strap 
from the front, this is the front of my work, through that hole there between the second and third double crochet. Here's one, two, and right there would be three. Pull it through from the top and through the back. I'm gonna use that tail there to sew. And now I'm just gonna put a few stitches like this and sew it together with my yarn needle. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I take my yarn needle in one of my tails and I'm just barely, I mean, right there at the top, right there. I'm not making it come way up. You can you can try it on and see if you need to make it come up and sew it up further, but um, I'm gonna go by my measurement and hopefully <laughs> I don't have to adjust it. And now I'm gonna do a few stitches here just to sew it. So it doesn't come undone. I'm sewing from front to back, sewing on from just the strap. I'm not going into my top. I guess you could go into your top, it really wouldn't matter, but just sew it on a few times to where you feel like the strap's secure. And then you would take it and you would hide these tails that you have remaining. Now you'd flip to the other side and take your strap <clears throat> and make sure that it's not twisted when you sew it on to this side. I'm going to move that stitch marker. So flatten it out straight. You can see the wrong side of the strap is facing me. Make sure you don't twist it and bring it forward. So when you bring it forward, the front of your strap is facing you and you do the same thing over here. You go through the, here's, you go through the second and third, the hole in between the second and third double crochet through the front of your work. So here's double crochet number one. Okay, here's double crochet number one, double crochet number two, and double crochet number three. I want to go between two and three without twisting my strap. It's very important not to twist it. Go into that hole and bring it forward like that, and then sew it on. Now you'll have to, there's no tails on this end, so you'll have to get another piece of yarn and load up your yarn needle. And you sew it the same way. Take it, I'm showing it at the very edge there. I'm gonna go through the straps. I'm gonna leave a tail there so I have something to sew later. And I'm gonna do it just a couple times. I'm actually gonna knot the tail right now with the main piece so it doesn't come undone. Couple knots and then we can sew that tail in two later at the end. But now I'm going to keep knotting. I, th I think I knotted it and it still came undone. So I will knot it again. <laughs> Anyways, this is how you sew on the straps. It's real easy. Or if you know a better way to get them sewed on than me, that's fine. This is just a, the basic easy way to, to make a tank top. For someone that wants tank top to wear or to wear underneath clothes or whatever. I'm having a hard time here. I don't even think I'm getting my strap. There I did. Now let me put a knot in it. This is a knot going on the back so you won't notice it. And after you get one strap on, I recommend trying it on again and make sure make sure it's in the right spot for your other strap. Feel like it needs to come down a little bit. Um, you could only, if you want, just put a couple stitches in it. Um, loose, you know, a couple stitches in it. Try it on, make sure it lays where it want where you want it to, and then sew it on more if it's right. If it's wrong, you can take out them couple stitches and maybe um, if it's too loose, pull it up a little bit more in the back. If it's too tight, let a little bit more loose come down. But remember, it stretches a bit. Especially if it's acrylic, 
I'm using cotton. It's not going to stretch as much as acrylic, but still will have some stretch. But anyways, this is this is just the easy way to sew a strap on, back and forth. And the straps don't have to be. I mean, you want them sewed on tight, but the shirt sh should still stay in place pretty well. There we go. Now I'm going to use it, do another knot here in the back. And then I'm going to weave and hide these tails. And that should be it. I know my video was probably super, super confusing. And I apologize for that. But if I don't give out numbers, I'm all confused myself. So <laughs> I'm just trying to. But I know every woman's, bo every, every woman's uh, body is different. So you have to adjust accordingly to your body. You know, all parts of a woman's body is different. So that's why this, this is the easiest way to make a tank to adjust to your own body preference, you know, by adjust, getting your waist measurement and, and going from there. So hopefully it wasn't too confusing. It probably was. But I'm going to hide the rest of these tails and, and then it's finished once you get all your tails in. Remember though, it is important to try it on periodically when you're putting your straps on after you get a couple stitches in it just to make sure they're laying where you want them to lay where they're not too loose and remember if you're wearing it with the bra to try it on with the bra because that would make a difference of how your straps lay <clears throat> I cannot imagine anyways I would imagine that it would but that's it that's all there is to this this uh, video I know it was probably me stuttering all over the place not easy to follow like I said if I don't have specific stitch counts to give you it's hard for me to explain how to to make something <laughs> to adjust to your body I tried though if you didn't like it you can give me a thumbs down I can handle it but if you did like it found it informative hopefully you did but you may not have stick to my other tutorials where I give measure or where I give stitch counts and I, that might be better but if you liked it give it a thumbs up I'd really appreciate it a share don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you make this or anything else I'd really like to see a picture of it on Instagram even if it's something not, that I didn't um, that I didn't show you how to make and you want to show me you can show me on my Instagram feed hashtag bag day crochet and I will see it and check it out that's it I hope that you I really hope you're able to follow along um but remember this shirt's good just to wear as a tank for summer it's good to wear as a tank for underneath a uh, shirt or however you want to wear it but that's it until next time let's check it out that's mine I guess I gotta put it on and try it on I think it's gonna fit have a good day hey everybody it's Mr. Bod from Bag O'Day Crochet and today I'm going to show you how to navigate Crystal's channel. First, you want to go to the main YouTube page. Next, you want to type Bag O Day Crochet in the search blank and click search. Scroll down till you find the channel. There's Crystal, Bag O Day Crochet. If you haven't subscribed, click subscribe. Click the bell. Click all to receive all notifications every time she uploads a video. Click on Bag Day Crochet. Here we are. Follow her on Instagram. Follow on Facebook. Visit the Etsy shop to find great patterns. Follow on Pinterest. Click videos to find all of the great Bag Day Crochet videos. Yarn hauls, tutorials, unboxings. Click playlists. Everything's organized so it's easy to find. And I'm sure you'll find something that you love. Welcome to our wonderful community. And as always, happy crochet.
everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this lady's vest here this is what it looks like okay so it's it's not hard to do and i'm going to show you um how you can take measurements and the size that i made will fit a size medium to large it's um i'm sizing it medium large that's what i'm going to say that it's going to fit um if you want to make it like a large or an extra large to 2x you would just need to do another repeat of the repeat rows to make your panels um wider and so forth so that's it's easy to adjust the size that way now the length is where you need to uh, figure up for yourself. Now you see me in the pictures. I am five foot three inches long. And you see where it goes on me. So I'm gonna measure my piece. My piece measures approximately 35 inches. From my shoulders down, it's 35 inches. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit how it's put together so you'll understand um, how you need to figure out the length. Okay, so this is two panels. There's one here and there's one here. They are put together. Here's the neck opening. Each panel is made separately. So this is one panel. The length of your chain needs to be however long you want your piece to be so the length of your chain is as you can see from me it will it goes to about to my knees all the way up over my shoulders and back down to my bottom to to where it ends so it's a very long chain your beginning chain is very long so even though it only measures 36 inches mine it's actually double that because i fold it because it's it's folded in half or it goes over your shoulder right here so it's actually your first beginning piece is actually the back and the front i hope that makes sense and then it's sewn along the side and an armhole is left i do tell you the, how you can make your sleeves bigger if you want to um in the video and here's the other side done the same way one a really long panel depending on how you can make it shorter if you want you can make it longer if you want but your chain determines the length of your vest so it starts here in the front it wraps around and makes the sleeve and it goes to all the way down the back and then again it's sewn together at the other side and the armhole is left and then once we get that done, we sew the back up, right? The two panels that we made, and then the back is sewn right up at the middle. And then we leave an area for the neck, which you'll see how that's done in the video also. And then we just clean up all the edges with some single crochet. You can add fringe or do whatever you want. Um, remember, I said this will fit at size medium large, and if you want to make it bigger, you would just, uh, for like, uh, size extra large to 2x do another row of the repeat rows that i'm going to tell you and so forth if you need to make it bigger than that um, some beads there of course you know those are optional but it's really not that hard double crochet uh shell stitches single crochet that's about it i think you guys can do it in fact i know that you can do it trust me i wouldn't say that you could do it if I didn't think that you could. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Let's get started on this. Do you want to? Okay. So, first off, I need a new camera stand. <laughs> okay. So, the, the yarn that I'm using is called a Lion Brand Low Tide. It's a chain spun, very airy yarn, which makes it very lightweight vest. It is a medium weight number four. 81 acrylic and 19 polyester. It has a nice stretch to it also. That's because it is chain spun. Now you do not have to use this yarn. You can use any medium four weight that you have. 
Um, 306 yards per ball. I used five, but I didn't use all of five, only some of the fifth one. I'm going to say you're going to need about, to make it the size that I made it, uh, to fit medium slash large at the length that I made it for me, I'm short. I used about 1,300 yards of yarn. Now, any longer or any bigger, you know you'll need more yarn than that. But that's, that's, that's about what I made for mine. The collar I chose is called Palm. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to be using my all-time favorite size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, so remember I said the beginning chain will be the length of your uh, vest. So this is a part that you need to measure. You need to make one huge long chain that's going to go where you want it to land in the front over your shoulder and where you want it to land in the back. I chained my, I chained for mine, 237 stitches. So your chain, whatever that might be, needs to be a multiple of six plus three. Any multiple of six plus three, however long you want it, just make sure you remember that it is going to be it goes from your front all the way over your shoulder all the way down however long you want it to be but a multiple of six plus three so i chained 237 and um, i'm going to show you on a smaller scale because i already have my big piece done so once you get your chain amount chained what you want to do is double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook remember we don't count the one that's on our hook and double crochet into that fourth stitch and now we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain Okay, once you make it to the end of the row, that will that will end row one. Now the amount of stitches you have will, could be different than mine depending on the length um, that you did. But if you're following along with me, you're my size, you like the length of mine, um, you should have a total of 235 stitches at this point. So row two is going to start the repeat rows. So we're going to start row two off by chaining one and turning our work. Now we're going to work right back into this very, very first stitch and we're going to single crochet into it. Like that. And now we're going to start the repeat of row two. We're going to skip two stitches. So skip, skip, and we're going to shell into the next. So a shell is five double crochets into the same stitch. So skip your two. And in the next one, we're going to work five double crochets. Then we're going to skip two stitches again, skip, skip, and we're going to single crochet into the next. And that's the repeat. Again, we'll skip two stitches. Skip, skip, and in the next we shell. So five doubles into the same stitch. Skip two, skip, skip, and single into the next. Now we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Skip two stitches, shell into the next. Skip 
skip two stitches and single into the next. So go ahead and repeat that until you get to the end of row two. All right, I'm coming to the end here and you should have, I uh, just did a shawl, you should have three stitches left. This chain on the end counts as a three. Um, go ahead and skip your last two and single crochet into that last stitch. Following along with me, you should have a total of 39 shells at the end of row two. So now we're going to start row three. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to start off by putting a double crochet into this very first stitch here. Like that. Now what we're going to do is chain two and we're going to single crochet into the middle stitch of our next shell. So it's actually the third stitch. So if you skip two, skip, skip, single crochet into that middle stitch. Then we chain two again and we're going to skip two stitches, skip, skip, and we'll be at the single crochet from the previous row. We're going to double crochet into that stitch. And that'll be the repeat now for row three. Chain two. And again, we want to skip two, the first two stitches of the shell and single into the next stitch, which is the middle stitch. Chain two. Skip those next two stitches of the shell or the last two stitches of the shell. And down here, you will be at the single crochet from the previous round previous row, go ahead and double crochet into that. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Chain two, single crochet into the middle of the next shell, chain two, and double crochet down here into the single crochet of the previous row. And go ahead and repeat this pattern until you get to the end of the row. Make sure you chain two after every single crochet and after every double crochet. All right, I am coming to the end of row three. I single crocheted into the middle stitch of my last shawl. I chained two. Now I'm going to end by double crocheting into my last stitch. Now, following along with me, if you, at the end of row three, if you're doing the same size as me, same length and everything, you will have 235 stitches. And that is counting every double crochet, every single crochet, and two stitches for each of the chain two spaces. So you count these as two stitches. And then every single and every double, you'll have 235. And that's what it starts to look like. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on row four. Chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to double crochet into the very first stitch. chain two and double crochet into the next stitch which is the single crochet chain two and double crochet into the next stitch which is the double crochet and that's the repeat for row four very easy chain two double crochet into the next stitch which is the single chain two double crochet into the next stitch which is the double crochet from the previous row so now we're going to repeat this until we get to the end of row four chain two pretty much you're chaining two and double crocheting into the next stitch chain two double crochet into the next stitch and you want to repeat this until you get to the end of row four all right once you make it to the end of row four i double crocheted there in my last single crochet i chain two now i want to make sure i double crochet into the last stitch here on the end which is a double crochet from the previous row that'll end row four there and again, if you count every double crochet in every chain two, two space, the two space, the chain two space as two stitches, you'll have 235 
Okay, now we'll start round five, which is the final round of our repeat. So we'll chain one and turn. And we're gonna double crochet right back into this very first stitch. So right here on top of this double crochet from the previous row. And now we're gonna work into this chain two space and we're gonna work two double crochets into that chain two space. So there's one and there's two. And then we're gonna work a double crochet into the next double crochet. And that's the repeat for round five, or row five. Two double crochets into the next chain two space. I'm just going right through the space, two doubles. And then one double crochet on top of the next double crochet. Again, two double crochets into the next chain two space. And one double crochet into the next double crochet. And I am going to repeat that all the way until I get to the end of row five. All right, I'm coming to the end of row five. And here is my final chain two space. So I wanna go ahead and work two double crochets into it. And I wanna end by double crocheting into the top of the last double crochet. Following along with me, you'll have 235 stitches. That's the repeat rows. Rows two, three, four, and five. So for my size, regardless of how long you made it, the, the width needs to be for a size medium uh, slash large is what I made. You're gonna need to do 17 rows and that, that includes row one. So you repeat rows two, three, four, and five until you have a total of 17 rows. Now, if you want to do extra large to 2x, you would do another repeat of rows 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you'll have a total of 21 rows. So make sure you, you'll end on a, a double crochet row. Um, if it looks small, don't worry. Remember, the, we have a back portion too. So it'll, in at all essence, it will be doubled of, as what you see. So, plus it's a little bit form-fitting around the waist. Not, not really that bad, but a little bit. So, you continue until you get to the, you know, the, the width that it needs to be. One more time, I'll repeat that. Medium, total counting row one, 17 rows. You repeat rows two, three, four, and five. Um, that's for medium and large. Size medium slash large. Extra large, 2x, you repeat for a total of 21 rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and you go ahead and get started, finish that, and I'll meet back up with you. All right, once you get both pieces made, now we're going to um, sew both pieces um, together, which I've already done, down the side separately. So this is one piece that I have sewn. There's my seam on the inside. Here's my seam on the outside. Nice and clean. I left a sleep arm. I left a space for my arm, and I edged my arm with single crochet. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other piece. So I'm going to set this one to the side because it is primed. It's ready to be sewn together completely. But let's start with this one. Okay. So now you need to determine which way you like the looks of it better. You like the looks of it where the shells are facing the wrong way, or you like to turn it over and do you like the looks where the shells are facing the right way it's really up to you it's your garment I like it where the shells are facing the wrong direction as you can see when you look at the shells the double crochets of the shells are they're facing the wrong way but whatever either way you like is fine it doesn't matter how you sew it up but since I like it this way I have to sew it the wrong way so here's the side I like right here. I want this side to be the one that shows up. So I'm gonna fold my piece 
like this. So now the wrong side is facing me. So whenever I flip my work inside out, this seam will be on the end. Uh, whenever I flip my work on inside or right side out, the seam will be on the inside. So I want to make it, you want to make sure you crochet it, crochet crochet it together or slip stitch it together in a way the shells are um, coming towards you like um, both panels where the shells are say from your chest they're going in towards your chest or if you want them to face the opposite direction that's fine just make sure you you sew up both sides to either where the shells are coming in towards you or the shells are going away from you you don't want one going one way and one going the other that would look kind of funny but I mean I guess you could do it if you want to <laughs> it's up to you all right so like I said I'm going to be slip stitching mine together so I want my shells sorry about that to be going in towards my uh chest area stomach area whatever so I need to slip mine, slip stitch mine. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Here is where I first started my very first row. So I folded my piece in, in, in half, you can see, vertical wise. It's folded in half. So what I'm going to do is slip stitch this together. And I'm going to leave a hole at the top of my arm. Now that's going to be different for every woman. You can determine how... Uh, big of a hole you want to leave for your arm there but I'm going to go into that first stitch there and the first stitch on this piece I'm going to pull my yarn through and I am going to start by chaining one now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the next stitch on my first piece the next stitch on my second piece so go ahead and look for it make sure you get your right stitches and slip stitch and I'm gonna go into the next stitch on the first piece the next stitch on the back piece and slip stitch and I'm gonna do this all the way up until I get not to the top until I leave enough area what you have to do is you probably need to try it on um, to where your arm fits comfortably through there because women's arms are different. Some are thicker, some are thinner. But however many inches you decide to leave, or however many, if you go by counting your stitches, whatever, um, you have to make sure you leave the same amount on the opposite side. There's no certain number of stitches, like stitch count, that you need to leave for the sleeve. It just needs to be equal to the other side. So that it doesn't look like one's bigger than the other. So on my sleeve, as you can see, I'm continuing up the side. On my sleeve, on my other piece, I'll show you here. I left an opening um, of 46 stitches around which was approximately uh, six inches. Now, bigger or smaller, it's up to you. If you're smaller and stature, you might need to you know, make it smaller. If you're larger, you can make it larger. Maybe you, want it, maybe you want this as a swimsuit cover and you want it to go way down here. However big you want your arm openings, it does not matter. You can determine that. Just make sure you do the same amount on both sides so I will continue slip stitching this all the way up and I will leave uh, six inches on mine or uh, I counted my stitches actually I left 46 stitches open for my armhole and I'm going to meet back up with you once we get this sewn up and then we'll take care of the arm and then we will take care of the back and then we'll be just about finished okay I made all mine all the way to the top and like I said mine was about six inches but I did count my stitches so I have 46 stitches here left and uh, 46 on my other piece so what I did I just went ahead and clipped that off tied that 
Now let's flip the right side out real quick. Now, seam nice and clean. Nice, nice. Okay, let's go around the sleeve. So now we have the right side of our work facing us. So I'm just going to go around the sleeve with a row of single crochet. If you want to make a sleeve on yours, you can go around it with double crochet or whatever you want to do. But I'm just more of a sleeve than what it has is what I'm saying. But I'm just going to go around to clean up the edge. So I'm going to start in the stitch that I just ended in. I'm going to pull through and chain one go back in and single crochet and I'm just going to work around my entire sleeve putting one single crochet in every stitch along the sleeve and this is just going to clean up that edge since it was our beginning row it kind of curls up you see this is going to straighten that out so it doesn't look like that and like I said if you feel like maybe making a longer sleeve on it um Okay, you know, you could always go around it with double crochets. Um, that would look nice. Or, you know, be creative. However, you know, however you think. Double crochet with the chain one in between. Something like that. To kind of go with the pattern of the top. But for me, one row of single is all I'm going to do. So I'm going to continue around until I get back around my starting point. I'm going all the way around the sleeve. Okay, I've made it all the way around to my starting point. You can see right here is my first um, single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into it and flipping that yarn off because I'm only doing that one row. If you want to do more, you go right ahead. And then I'm going to hide the tails. There we go. So that's what it kind of looks like now. We got two pieces exactly the same. Now, as you can see, here's one piece. I got my shells going towards my belly on this piece and my shells going towards my belly on this piece. So I just wanted to make sure both pieces that the shells were going the same way. Like I said, it didn't matter which way they went as long as they were going the same way. Now we're going to work on sewing up the back and leaving an opening in the back, kind of like a V a little bit for the neck. Okay, so now we are going to sew the back up. Okay, we're not, we're going to, we're going to do it, um, we're not going to use a needle, we're not going to slip stitch or anything like that. We're only going to sew up one piece, on, so here's the back. The front and the back look the same, so it doesn't matter which, which side that you use, just make sure your shells are facing... Um, the correct direction on both pieces. So see my shells are going in this way and then this way. We're only sewing up the the front panels of each piece. So these back panels or these panels down here will be the front of our work and they're going to be left open. So we're going to grab these like this. I'm at, I'm at the bottom of my work. Okay. Now I'm going to be using my hook. I'm going to go into the first stitch on the first panel and grab my yarn and I will chain one. I'm going to go back into that same stitch and do a double crochet like that. And then I'm going to go over here to the next panel on the opposite side panel here and I'm gonna go into the last stitch on it and double crochet like that now I'm going to chain one okay here we go now we're going to skip one stitch on our first panel so skip one and double crochet into the next. So I'm skipping this one and double crocheting into the next. And I'm going to go over here to my other panel. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to skip one and double crochet into the next. 
and then I'm going to chain one. And that's what I'm going to repeat the all the way, um, not all the way up, up until it fits up around upper neck. So, but quite of the ways up. So again, I'm going to come over here to my first piece here, first panel, skip one and double crochet in the next. So I'm skipping and double crocheting into the next. Don't chain one, go to your next piece and do the same thing. Skip one and double crochet into the next piece. Now we chain one. Let's do it again. We're going to skip one on our front panel and double crochet into the next. And then we go over to our next panel. We skip one and double crochet into the next. And then we chain one. Again, come over here to our first panel. Skip one, double crochet into the next. Don't chain one yet. Come over here to your next panel. You skip one, double crochet into the next. Now we chain one. And then if we look at it, it makes like a little mesh design on the back, I guess. That's kind of how it looks like being sewed up. Kind of goes along with the mesh that we um, made in the, um, right here. So I'll be doing this all the way up my piece. Um, not all the way to the top, close to the top though, until, you know, I feel, I want to keep trying it on until I feel like, you know, it, it fits around my neck okay. So let me work for a little while and I'll get near the top doing this um, little mesh uh, way we've been doing it. If you prefer not to do it this way, you don't have to. You can always sew it together like normal. Um, <clears throat> but I will work, keep working. Skip one, double crochet in the next. Skip one on my other panel, double crochet in the next. And I'll let you know how far up I go and then chain one before I stop um, where I want my neck portion to start. So skip one on this panel, double crochet in the next. Go to your other panel, skip one, double crochet into the next, and then you chain one. One more time. Come over here to the first panel, skip one, double crochet into the next. Go over here to the other panel, skip one, double crochet into the next, and then we chain one. So I'm going to keep on going and I'll let you know how far I get up before I stop. Okay, so I ha I crocheted all the way up in that same manner until um, I had about four inches left here. Uh, make sure your bottom is, and your pieces are all lined up at the bottom. Everything is equal how it's supposed to be. And then I went to where, like I said, there was about four inches left on each on each side. Now that's going to be different uh, from woman to woman, depending on your body size, um, how wide it is, how small it is. So my suggestion is that you just try it on until it fits you, feels comfortable to you. Now once you get it as tall as you want it to be, you make your last stitch on the back panel. Do not chain one. Just go ahead and tie it off. And then we can hide that tail. So that would be the back sewn up. And I have my little space up here. <clears throat> now one last thing I'm going to do is go around the front. I got lots of tails, don't I? Hanging everywhere. So my piece is sewn together. So this is what it looks like so far. I have my two front panels here. All right, here's one. Here's one. Here is the area that we left in the back. What I'm going to do now is I am going to start right down here. Single crochet all the way up. One in every stitch. I'm going to go around the back here. Single cro crochet across those double crochets that we made the, uh, sew the back up with. Single crochet back up and back down the other side. 
till I get to the bottom down here. And that will clean up those side edges. So that's what you want to do next. So you just start your yarn right down here in this first stitch and start single crocheting all the way up. And I'll tell you what, I'll meet you when I get up here to the neck area where we go across. Okay, so I've made it to the top of my work here. You can see here is where we were doing our double crochets to sew up the back. I got the front of my work facing me though. Here's the back right here. This is the right side of the back though. So I'm still single crocheting in every stitch. Cleaning up these edges and I'm getting ready to go across where we sewed together. So all I'm going to do is I think is just put two double crochets and just right through the first chain or through this first space and then I'm going to put two through the next chain space. I think that would be good enough and then I'm going to continue working one single crochet and every stitch all the way down the other side of the front of my work. So the front panel here on the other side. Cleaning up this final edge here. And I'm going to do this until I get to the bottom, to the end, and then I'll just tie it off. Okay, so I have hidden my tails, and one last thing I am going to do is, I did it already on one side, is make a braided tie for the front, and I put a couple beads on. These beads came off a of paparazzi jewelry necklace. Um, one of my friends says paparazzi. I don't wear jewelry, so um, I use the beads and stuff for bags and whatnot. So what you want to do is, well, this is what I did. You can actually put your beads wherever you want. I tried my vest on. I have all my tails hidden and everything. And I made mine um, go right up under my chest, my tie, um, maybe like an inch under, something like that, uh, my chest area. And I marked our, both spots with stitch markers to make them equal so they match up just right. And then um, I already took the stitch marker off and did this one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Now, th this is optional. You don't have to put these ties on here. But what I have is, three pieces of my yarn just three strands probably about two feet long of course you probably won't need near that much and you want to go ahead i tied it in between two double crochets right here along my stitch marker so i'm gonna go right in between these two double crochets and pull them through tie a knot just a knot like regular knot like this once and again I'll hide the tails from the knot later but for now that's what I did and now like I said I'll hide those later I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna do a simple braid as you can see what I did um, my braid is approximately six to eight inches long you make yours as long or as short as you feel fit uh, for um, to fit across your chest area. Like I said, if you want to add a button, you can add a button too. That would be something cool. You could single crochet um, a strap, a couple straps to tie instead of the simple braid like I'm doing. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Imagination. Creativity. Remember, your brain is a beautiful thing. Don't waste it. Be creative. Imagine what you can do just with a piece of string. So as I mentioned, braid it like I am. Single crochet it. Put a button there if you want. Leave it plain if you want. Whatever you want to do. Uh, use, buy leather strap, little leather straps, use those. Just anything to make the vest your own reflection of yourself so of course mine's gonna have beads <laughs> and gold ones at that so anyways just make your uh if you're following along with me just make your ties about the same size 
thread your beads on there. Let me try to... You can see I'm just doing a simple braid. It's not even that noticeable the braid isn't, but that's okay. I said you want to make them about the same size, so let me see if I'm there yet. Um, not quite, almost. Let me finish braiding until I get them to the same size. Okay, I got my ties pretty close to being the same size. Let me move that one over there. Oops, sorry about that. So, I got my braid done here. What I'm going to do is tie it in a knot. Hold it there. Now I'm going to cut these off a little bit shorter. Not, uh, that way I got, I can, uh, string my beads on it and I don't want to string it so far down. So probably leave about four inches or so on it. Now if you're using beads you want to make sure you use a needle then a uh, yarn needle thin enough that'll go through the head of your beads or beads that have eyes on them enough that'll go through those three strands of yarn or you can just you know if you're using one strand or however you're doing it but I'm going to go ahead and pull that up to the top of my knot there and I'm going to put one more just for fun that and now I'm going to knot this down here as tight as I can get it to the beads anyways Then I am going to clip it off. I leave a little bit of a tail. I left it like an inch here on this one, so I'll do the same for this one. Here we go. There we go. Now we need to take those tails up here and hide them. So I'm going to take one at a time and individually just weave them through the inside of the vest. That way they're not visible. And then we'll be done after we hide all of our tails we'll be finished i hope you guys are able to follow along okay i think it turned out pretty nice it's not bad not much i'm um, wearing crochet clothing but if i was this might be something i choose um if you're able to you know if you if you enjoyed this video give me a like don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all my videos any of them that I put on. Plus I have hundreds of crochet tutorials. All free on YouTube. Hundreds. I mean hundreds and hundreds. Anything you could ever want. I have. And I have multiples of it. So you know I do anything. Bags. Baby clothes. Baby blankets. Anything of the sort. Don't forget to come follow me on Instagram. Where you can show me everything that you crocheted. I'd really love to see a picture of it. This Bag Day Crochet on Instagram. I'll put a link to that below. Come follow me on Facebook also. Um, and that's it. Until next time, have a good day and stay safe out there. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. This is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make that top there, that spring or summer top that you saw me wearing in the picture. Okay, you can adjust the size on this to make it fit your your size. Now, as it sits, um, I am five foot three, and it should fit size large to extra large, the size that I made. So I'll go ahead and give you some measurements of it. So from the neckline down, I can't get it all on camera here, but I'll try. It is 24 inches. And then across is 21 inches. Okay, so that is the measurement. Now that does not count this little sleeve part up here. That, that you can put up on your shoulder like I was wearing or it can hang down. And this is what the stitch looks like. Works great over a tank top or some other type of top like that. Now remember, the size I'm making is for large to extra large. And if you want to make it longer, because I am only 5'3", you can definitely do more rows to make it longer. Okay, so 
to this project, I used Gazelle Rock and Roll Yarn. And this comes from Hobium. It is a um, medium four weight. It's an acrylic polyamide merino blend. You do not have to use this yarn. Any four weight yarn will work fine. But I just use regular black here. Now there are 125 yards per ball. And I went through um, almost four balls. So, probably right at 500 yards is what you're going to need. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. I am going to show you with a different color yarn how to start it. Because the black is probably going to be hard to see. Okay, so the yarn that I'm using to show you is this Red Heart Super Saver. So, I'm going to show you how to make it uh, size large, extra large. Now, if you want to make it bigger, the multiple of the stitch is four plus one. So to make it my size, I started out with a chain of 73. Now, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, what you need to do is, um, um, I always Google a uh, women's sizing chart for shirts. And it always says that a large to extra large averages in between 40 and 42 inches. I always take the biggest number. So that is why one side of my panel was 21 inches. And the other back side, because it's one, it's two panels sewed together. One side was 21 and the other side was 21, which made it a total of 42 inches, which would be equivalent to a large, extra large. So you look at the women's sizing chart and you determine the size, say you need um, a 50, 50 inches uh, around chest, chest wise, say it's 50 inches, you'd make one panel 25 and the other one 25. All right, so what you want to do now, once you get your chain as long as you want it to be um, in a multiple of four plus one, so remember mine's large, extra large, I chain 73. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by putting a double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. Now remember, we don't count the one that's on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna do a double crochet, like that. Now we're gonna start the repeat. We're gonna chain three, and we're gonna skip three, one, two, three, and double into the next. This is a relatively easy stitch to do. It's just a two row repeat. Again, we're going to chain three, skip three, one, two, three, and double into the next. Again, chain three, skip three, one, two, three, and double into the next. Now you want to repeat this pattern until you get to the end of the row. Chain three, skip three again, and double into the next. So I'm going to repeat this until I make it to the end. All right, I'm coming to the end. I have four chains left. I'm going to go ahead and do a chain three and double crochet into the last stitch and that'll end row one. Follow along with me now. You'll have a total. What we're going to do is we're going to count this little spot here as a chain space. So counting that chain space, you have a total of 18 chain spaces. Remember, you got to count that little guy on the end. He counts as a space. So if you're following along with me, you'll have 18 now. So we are going to chain four and turn our work. Now we are going to put a single crochet in the middle stitch of this chain three. So in the second stitch, the middle one right through it, single crochet. And then we're going to do a chain of two and we're going to put a double crochet on top of this next double crochet. Just like that. 
and we're going to kind of start repeating. We're going to chain two, single crochet in the middle stitch of this chain three space, single crochet, chain two, and then we double crochet on top of this next double crochet. Just like that. Again, we're going to chain two, single crochet in the middle stitch of this chain three here, chain two, and then double crochet on top of the next double crochet. And we're going to repeat this all the way to the end. So again, chain two, single crochet in the middle stitch of the chain three, chain two, and double crochet on top of the next double. So I'm going to continue this until I get to the end of my row and this is what it starts to look like. All right, I'm coming to the end of row two and I did a double crochet right here in the last double crochet and we have this little chain space here on the end. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to single crochet in the third stitch. It's actually a chain four there. One, two, three, four. I'm going to single crochet into the third chain of that chain four. Just like that. And that'll end row two. Row three, we're going to chain four and turn our work. Now this is very similar to row one. We are going to double crochet into this very first double crochet. And then we're going to repeat by chain and three. This starts our repeat. We chain three and then we go, we skip this single crochet here and into the next double crochet. We double crochet right on top of it. Just like that. Again, chain three, skip this single, and then we come to the double, and we double crochet right on top of it. Chain three, skip the single, we come right here to the double, and double crochet into the top of it. And this is what we're going to repeat for row three. Chain three, skip that single and double crochet into the top of the next double. And we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Okay, I'm coming to the end and I did a double crochet here in my last double crochet and I chained three. I have a single crochet and a chain space here on the end, chain four. I'm going to do a double crochet in the third stitch of that last chain four like that and then again counting this little guy chain here on the end you'll have 17 or I'm sorry 18 chain spaces and that's what we're going to keep repeating we're going to keep repeating rows two and three until we get it the length that we need it to me and we need to make two panels the exact same So for row four, I'm going to repeat row two. So that's where we chain four, turn our work, and we single crochet in the middle stitch of our chain three. And then we chain two and double crochet into the next double crochet. Chain two, single crochet into the middle stitch of our chain three, chain two, and double into the next double. So we're just gonna keep repeating rows two and three, like I said, until you get it, you know, the length that you need it to be. All right, I have finished my 33 rows of my panel. I'm gonna do two more rows, but they're gonna be short rows. It's going to create the neckline. So if you want yours longer than mine, than the picture, you keep going until you get it as long as you'd like. But remember, we will be adding two more rows to the top and make sure you end 
on a chain space row like this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, that was row 33 that I just finished and it was a chain space row. So for row 34, I didn't tie off or anything. So I'm just going to make this row a little shorter. So I'm going to do my chain four and turn and I'm going to do the same thing we've been doing, but I'm only going to do it over three um, of these chain spaces. So I'll go into the second chain of that, chain three, chain two, double crochet into the next, chain two, go into the middle stitch again of that chain three, chain two, double crochet into the next. So it's the same thing we've been doing, I'm just going to stop short chain two, go into the middle stitch of that chain three, chain two, and then double crochet into the next. Now, if you are making yours, if you are making a bigger size, you might need to go in further. You want to leave your neck hole though where there are 12 of these chain three spaces open. So I used up three here. So here was three here. And then I'll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then there'll be three at the end. And that's counting this little chain space here. He counts as a chain, as a chain three hole. So, 12 of them for your neck hole. If you're making it um, smaller than mine, you might want to leave your neck hole a little bit smaller. It's hard for me to uh, do a bunch of different sizes, so I just try to do my best to teach you, teach you how. So now what we're going to do, I went in three of these shade spaces, as you can see. So I just did my double crochet into that double crochet. Now what I'm going to do is chain three, or chain four, I'm sorry, turn my work, and I'm going to go across again, and I'm going to do the chain space row again. So I am going to do a double crochet into this first double crochet here. And then I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain three and I'm going to end like always by double crocheting in the third stitch of the chain four here at the end and that will end that side and you see you'll have your three chain spaces there now what I'm going to do is clip that off and I want to do the same thing on the other side clip that off and tie it off here so i'm going to turn it back to where i'm on the other side here now this one will look a little different because we're counting this in here as a chain three space so that's where we want to start in okay so we're going to start here in this chain space here on the end and to the third chain of that chain four start your yarn chain one we're going to go right back into it and single crochet and now we're going to work a chain of two and then we're going to double crochet into the top of this next double crochet and then we're going to chain two we want to work across three chain spaces but remember this small one here counts as one so again we're going to single crochet in the middle stitch of our next chain three space chain two, double crochet on top of the next double crochet, chain two, single crochet in the middle stitch of our next chain three space, oops, chain two, 
and then double crochet into the top of our next double. So let's check it out. And we went across three chain spaces. We did, because we're counting this little one here as a chain space. So there's one, two, three. So now again, we're going to chain four and turn our work. And we're gonna make a chain space row again. So we will double crochet into our first double crochet over here. Chain three, double crochet into the next double crochet right here. Chain three, and end by double crocheting into the third stitch of the last chain four. And that will give us three chain spaces again. It might look a little different than the other side, but it's still gonna look the same. So go ahead and clip that off and then tie that off. Now remember, you if you made yours bigger, you might need to go in a little bit more, but you wanna have 12 empty chain spaces here at the top. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 empty. And if you made yours smaller than mine, you might wanna go eight empty, or uh, 10, 10, 10 empty maybe, something like that, to make it a little bit smaller. Um, you can hold this up to you and adjust the size. That's kind of what I do. I just hold it up to myself and I go, I go like that, I go by that. All right. So now we're going to sew the two pieces together. So we'll get them out, lay them flat. Both sides look pretty much the same to me. So I'm going to lay both sides together here. And then I'm going to sew, but I need to leave a space for the armhole. Now you can make your armhole as big as you want it to be. My suggestion would be to, uh, what I'm gonna do is sew up the top first, and then I'm going to lay it over my shoulders and then decide where I want to put my armhole. So I'm gonna use a yarn needle and yarn to sew mine together. Okay, so I got the top facing me. Here you can see is the neckline right here, and here's the two rows that we did to kind of form that would go up over your shoulder. All I'm gonna do is I have my yarn needle, right side of your work facing you doesn't matter because if you want to flip it inside out you can because both sides look very similar and i'm going to start i know it's hard to see with the black but i'm going to start at the top of this chain three space and i'm just going to grab the loops and sew them together i'm not going to go um, over and over i'm going to go back and forth me using black you're not going to really be able to see where you sewed if you're using another color make sure you sew neatly that way uh, people can't you know you can't see your seam I got a knot in my yarn And I'm going to do this all the way across. And I'm going to do the same on both sides. Until that top is all the way sewed up. And this is the part that's going to kind of be on our shoulder. Just want to make, <clears throat> you just want to make sure that you sew it good, nice and tight, so it doesn't come undone. It will be stretchy though because it's a lacy fabric, lacy stitch, and that's fine. It's supposed to be like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up all the way across, sewing just this top part together, and then the the little shoulder area, the part that's gonna hang on your shoulders, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then I'll determine where I want to put my armholes. So 
So when you get to the end, I'll just finish. I'm almost to the end. Like I said, just make sure it's good and tight. that. Now that's all sewed up there at the top. And if you feel like you don't like your seam at the end, we can always flip it inside out. But since mine's black, it's not extremely noticeable. But now I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side, the other shoulder. All right, I have my piece sewed together here at the top. So now I'm going to fold it and sew up the sleeve. So I tried mine on and I determined where I want my armholes to be. So I want to make sure I leave those open. And you try yours on and determine where you want your armholes to be too in case you're doing a different size than me. So what I'm going to do is count down from the top counting the chain three spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be my, my armhole opening now if you want yours bigger than that that's completely up to you you can do it bigger or smaller so I'm gonna go ahead and tie these chain spaces together so I know not to sew that up but that's gonna be part of my sleeve okay now I'm gonna sew up the sides the same way that I sewed up the top with my yarn needle so I got my space marked off for my sleeve. So what I'm going to do, only thing that's important here is make sure you keep your rows lined up on each side. Make sure the chain, cha chain space rows stay lined up and then the other rows stay lined up. So here is my chain space row that I put my uh, marker in for my armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to the next row and then I'm just going to start sewing it together just like I did at the top, back and forth. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this the same. On both sides until it's sewn together as neatly as I can do this all the way down make sure you keep your rows lined up your chain space rows on both pieces stay lined up like this and then oops, your other rows stay lined up I'm gonna go all the way down but I'm actually gonna leave about two inches of it unsewn at the bottom just to give it like a little split um, you don't have to do that. You can you can sew it all the way up if you want. That's just something I'm going to do to decoration, I guess. So I'm going to continue down until I get to where I have about two inches left to sew. And that's where I'll meet back up with you. Okay, once you make it back down to the bottom where you're sewing it and you have just a couple inches left, I'm just going to leave that unsewed. You can sew it all the way up if you want, but I'm going to leave it and now I'm just going to kind of weave my tail in to hide it up the seam. So I'm just kind of going back up to hide my tail. Remember, it's your shirt. If you want it to go all the way down, that's fine. All right. So mine's all sewed up on both sides. Now I'm going to go around the collar with some single crochet to clean it up. Now, initially I was going to add sleeves to mine, but I decided against that. But I can show you how real quick, just the basics of adding sleeves. What you need to do is 
go around your entire sleeve opening with a row of single crochet and make sure that it's in a when you end in a multiple of four and then you can just continue with this same design for the sleeves if you want or you can do solid double crochet sleeves it doesn't matter but if you want to use this design make sure that it's in a multiple of four you just go around uh, single crochet row first and then you start doing your design this design right here or like I said double crochet if you want solid sleeves make them as long as short as as you wish but now I'm gonna go around the top and clean up the collar the row of single crochet so you want to get the right side of your work facing you I guess any side is the right side for me So I'm up here at the collar area, and get your single cr or your hook here. And let's see, here is where we crocheted the two pieces together. You can see. Just want to start somewhere around here in the corner of the chain spaces. So I'm see where this double crochet here is attached to this double crochet. I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to go into it and I'm going to put a single crochet. You don't have to exactly start there, but just somewhere around. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to go back into that double crochet and single crochet. Now this chain three space, I'm going to put three single crochets right through the chain three space. And then one single crochet right there into the next double. All we're doing is cleaning up the collar. Three single crochets right through this chain three space. And one single crochet into that next double crochet. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. Three single crochets into the next chain three space. And then one single crochet into the next double. Just like that and I'm gonna go all the way around until I get doing that until I get right over here where our shoulder part is and I'll meet right up with you right over here all right I've made it up here to the top here where our shoulder piece is, and you can see I just did three single crochets in this chain three space, one single crochet in that double, and then, and then I have these two doubles on the side and this double here. I'm gonna go into this space and work two single crochets. Now this does not have to be exact. And I'm gonna put one double crochet, or one, one single crochet in, in the top of this space here. This is just to kind of evenly spaced out single crochets. And then I'm gonna put two more single crochets in this next little V space and then that should get us around the turn here and now we can start I'll start by putting one single crochet right here into this double crochet and then I'll start again by working three single crochets into the chain three spaces and then one single crochet into the double crochet so I'm repeating what I just did on the front, on the back. And remember, it doesn't have to be exact. We're just kind of, the, the numbers don't really matter. We're just trying to clean up the top edge. So three singles in each chain three space. And then one on top of the double crochet until we make it back around to our starting point. Okay, now once you make it to the end here, you just slip stitch there in your first single crochet and you can tie off. Now, if you want to keep going with rows of single crochet to build your neck up, that's fine. You know, that would look good too. That's completely up to you if you want your neckline to be thicker than mine. Remember, it's your top. You do it however you like. I just kind of give you a little bit of direction, but you know, you can do it the rest of the way how you like. There we go. That's it. Remember, I wasn't, I decided against putting sleeves on it, but I did tell you how it's easily easily that you could put sleeves on it you just go around your sleeve area a single crochet if you're going to be using this same stitch make sure it's done in a multiple of four 
if you're going to use a straight double crochet then any number of stitches will work and you can make your sleeve as long or short as you want but that's it i'm going to leave the bottom the way it is i kind of like the the look of the bottom being a little bit jaggedy like that but that's it that's all there is to it i hope you enjoyed my tutorial please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel check out all my hundreds of <sighs> tutorials also i'll put a but until next time give me a big like and a subscribe on this channel have a good day hi everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this summer top right here that my mannequin emmy is wearing i'll come up a little closer she looks cool today with her sunglasses on. It's pretty hot here, so she had to wear her shades. It's got the open sleeves on the arms on both sides. And the belt, you don't have to put the belt on. You've seen the picture of it without the belt. And you can wear this as a top, just like this. Uh, Emmy's just got a white tank top on underneath it. Or I think it would be good for a swimsuit cover. Um, I do recommend though, if you do make it for a swimsuit cover, maybe to use uh, cotton. Uh, uh, I think that'd be best if you're planning on being in the water because it would absorb the water. But if you're just going to be hanging out on the beach, you know, this would be fine. Um, but otherwise, it makes a really cute top. Emmy seems to be liking it. She's working it. Um, it's a one size fits most. Um, but I do give you the multiple so you can make it smaller. Or larger if you want and it's quite easy to make and the neckline there you can also adjust that and make it uh, not quite so large if you want um, in the video it's real easy to make the neckline shorter you just come in a couple more spots and sew it instead of way back here that's completely up to you I wanted it to have a larger neckline but that's it so let's go ahead and get started on it Okay, for this project, I am using a Lion Brand Shawl and a Ball. It is a, um, a cotton acrylic blend, and it is a four weight. I think it's a little thinner. It's like, it, it is, it's a four weight, but it's like a thin four weight. But it's very pretty. Um, there's 481 yards in each skein and you're going to need a t almost two full skeins to finish this. The color I use is called Zen Azalea and of course you can use any color that you wish. You don't even, you don't have to use this yarn either. Um, any four weight yarn will work um, but if you want it to have a drape, the kind of a draping effect I recommend this yarn or one, another one that would probably drape nicely would be Red Heart Unforgettable, or even um, Caron Simply Soft would probably drape pretty well too. And if you're going to be using this, I think it would make a nice swimsuit cover. Um, I'd recommend some type of soft 100% cotton for that. You don't have to, but that's just what I'd recommend. So if you're going to be wearing it to cover a swimsuit, cotton would absorb the water. Um, a little better than acrylic but that is completely up to you so but this is what I used uh, a four ply or a four weight um, a cotton acrylic blend and then I'm going to be using a size K which is a six and a half millimeter crochet hook okay you want to start off with the chain of 120 if you want to make it just like me now, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, this stitch is done in a multiple of 9 plus 3. But, like, for for my size, I'm doing a chain of 120. Now, I already got my big piece done, so I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. But you want to go ahead and chain 120. And once you get your chain of 120 made, you want to go ahead and single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. Now remember, we never count the one that's on our hook. So one, two, in the second stitch, go ahead and put a single crochet. And then you're going to work one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like that. One single all the way to the end of the chain. 
Okay, when you make it to the end of your chain, you should have a total of 119 stitches now. So what we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. It does not count as anything. So what we're gonna do is gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and double crochet right back into this very, very first stitch. We're gonna put a double crochet into it. Just like that. Now we're gonna start working our shells. So we're going to skip four stitches. Skip, 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 skip. And in the next one, we want to work a triple crochet. So skip four, and then the next one, we triple crochet. And then we're going to chain two. And we're going to go back into the same stitch and double crochet. And then we're going to chain two, go back into the same stitch again, double crochet, chain two, one more time, double crochet, chain two, and then we finish our shell by triple crocheting into the same stitch. So that is what our shell consists of. It's a triple, a chain two, a double, a chain two, a double, a chain two, a double, a chain two, and a triple. So now we're gonna skip eight stitches now. So skip eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in the next one, we're gonna do our shell again. So we're gonna triple crochet. We don't chain two after this last triple crochet of this last shell. We just go ahead and do triple crochet and go in, we skipped eight, go into the next one and triple crochet again. And then we chain two. Go back into the same stitch, double crochet, chain two, same stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, and then triple crochet all that into that same stitch and that completed our next shell so it was triple chain two double chain two double chain two double chain two triple now again we're going to skip eight stitches again skip 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 so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the next one, you want to go ahead and do your shell. So triple crochet. Chain two. Double crochet. Chain two double, chain two, double, chain two, and then triple. And then again, that's our next shell. And then you would skip eight again, do a shell, skip eight, do a shell, and you want to repeat that until you get to the last, until you get to where you can't repeat anymore. You should have five stitches left. So keep repeating that until you get to the end. Okay, when you make it to the end of your row, 
you should have a total of 13 shells. Now remember, I did mine smaller just to show you how to do it, but you should have 13 and you should have five stitches that remain. One, two, three, four, five. You wanna skip four and then the last stitch after your last shell, double crochet right there into that last stitch. Just like that. Remember, you'll have 13 shells. So now we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna double crochet right back into this very, very first stitch. Now this row that we're doing right now is the repeat row for the rest of the pattern. So you double crochet right back into that same stitch. Like that. Now we're gonna do a shell again, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a shell into the middle double crochet <coughs> of the next shell. So here's the two triples, and then you can see the three doubles. We're gonna do our shell in the top of the middle one. So go ahead and grab that one, and we start off by triple crocheting right into the top of it. And then we chain two. In the same same stitch, double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two and then one triple. All that into the top of that middle double crochet. So it's just a shell on top of a shell. It's actually really easy. So we just jump over to the next shell and we find our middle double crochet, which is right here. And we do another shell right in the top of that stitch. So we start by triple crocheting right into the top of it. And then chain two, double, chain two, double, chain two, double, chain two, and then a triple. So that's our shell again. Triple two triples on the ends, and three doubles in the middle with chain twos in between. It's super easy. So we move to our next shell, and again, we're gonna shell into the middle double crochet, so this one right here, right on top of it. So go ahead and grab it, and then we triple crochet, chain two, Double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two. Double crochet, chain two, and triple. Now you wanna just keep repeating that, putting a shell in the middle stitch of the shell from the previous row until you reach the end of the row. And when you reach the end, you should have 13 shells still. You should always have 13 shells. And when you make it to the end, you just want to finish by putting a double crochet into the top of this double crochet here on the end. So go ahead and yarn over, go right into the top of that double crochet, and double crochet. So that's the repeat row. That's what we do for the rest of the pattern. So we'll do it again. We chain one and turn. Double crochet right back into the very first stitch. Shell in the middle stitch of the next shell. So we triple crochet, find that middle double, go right on top of it. Triple, chain two. Double, chain two. Double, chain two, double, chain two, and then triple. 
just like that and you see our shells they start to line up shell into the middle stitch of the next shell so this middle double crochet here triple crochet chain two double chain two double chain two double chain two and triple again we jump to our next shell and do the same thing again find your middle stitch and work a shell right into the top of it so we triple chain two double chain two double chain two double chain two and then triple and you just keep repeating that until you get to the end of your row and again you should have 13 shells when you make it to the end and then when you get to the end double crochet into the top of the double this last double crochet here just like that chain one and turn and repeat and that's all there there is to it really it's pretty easy now you want to keep repeating that row until you have a total of 28 rows of shells so i got three here one two three you want to do a total of 28 rows remember and there'll be 13 across 13 shells in each row 28 rows long now you can do it longer or shorter depending on how long or short you want it but if you do it any longer than what i'm doing it you're probably going to need another another skein of yarn because i don't have i won't have much left when i'm done with mine but but you can do it as long as you want but if you want to follow me you do 28 rows of these shells okay got your 28 rows done you want to make two panels exactly the same so you can see i got my 28 rows of shells i don't have a lot of space here to show you but it's 28 rows that's what you want to do you just tie off at that last row after you do your last double crochet there and you want two pieces exactly the same so i got one here and i already did my other one also so now we're going to put them together and we're going to sew them up so what we're going to do is, let me look at my piece here. Our first row at the top of double crochet. We're going to make um, one side. This side is facing the wrong way. That row of double crochet at the top is facing up. The wrong way of it is facing up. So... Lay it out like that. Now the other one, the row of single crochet at the top, you make the right side of it facing up. It really isn't that important that you do this. I mean, if you can't tell the difference, it's fine. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see there's the right side of the single crochet row. And if you look, you can see the back, that's the wrong side. So you want the bottom piece, the wrong side to be facing up of the single crochet row. And the top piece, you want the right side of the single crochet row to be facing up and get it all lined up. And remember, it's not that it's not that important. If you can't get that, no one's even going to build. I notice it probably. I'm probably really just being too picky about it. But so we're going to start making the get it all lined up here. And we're going to be using our yarn needle a lot now to sew this up. So I want to put. A little uh, sew up the corner a little bit on each side so I'm going to take a piece of my of my yarn and my yarn needle if you have a long tail or something that you think will work that's fine too but I'm going to sew up each of the corners at the top um, 
before we make the neck hole. So grab the corners and line them up. And go ahead and go right through them. The, we're working through the row of single crochet. And you want to sew not over, but back and forth. Just through like the first two stitches. And I'll do that several times here so it doesn't come undone. Now we're only working through two stitches, back and forth through two stitches. This is going to be part of the arm. Once you feel like it's tight enough and you don't think it's going to come undone, you can hide that tail. Both tails actually you want to hide. The one that you started with and then this one. So I'm going to kind of weave it in a little bit. Back through. this. We're only sewing up a tiny point here at the end. That's all we're doing. This is part of the arm. It'll come together. Right now I'm just trying to kind of hide this tail up. Okay, and then you want to kind of, you want to hide your other one. But we're going to do the same thing to the other side also. So let me hide this tail. I'm kind of weaving it through here. I love showing the ball, but sometimes it's not always the easiest to work with, but man, is it pretty. I think so. I think it makes a very pretty uh, women's tops. It's so drapey. I'm going to go ahead. This is my tail from when I first started my row. I'm going to go ahead and hide that while I'm hiding tails here. While I'm at it. Hide that the same way, just right here around the corner here. Now you can hide it as good as you as you want to. Mine's uh, kind of I don't always hide mine the best because mine's kind of just for tutorial purposes. Pretty good though. Now cut them ends off. Okay, now once you got your, you can see it's just a couple stitches there at the top corner that's sewed together nice and tight. Now you want to do the same thing to the other side. So get it lined up here. And sew this one the same way. Just through a couple stitches here first two stitches and this is part of our sleeve So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I'm going to hide these tails off and then we'll start so the neck hole. Okay, I got the other corner kind of sewed up just the same way. It's a couple stitches there in the corner. Now we're going to do the neck hole. So let me spread out my piece here so you can see it better. Okay, we're going to count in. Four shells. 
So one on both pieces. So make sure they're lined up. One, two, three, and four. So this is where we're gonna sew it together on the fourth shell. So you take your yarn needle and your piece of yarn and you see this hole here where the fourth shell went into and there'll be the same one on the back. Let's sew it together right through that hole and through the stitches through the single crochet on top of it. So kind of just go like that and then through the single crochets the one single crochet that's on top. So we're not really going over, we're going through on both pieces. We're going through that hole that the shell's in. And then we're on the back, we're going through the single crochets, that one single crochet that's on top of the shell. Now it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of try to get it the best that you can and you want to do that several times until that's sewed up nice and tight back and forth through that hole down there and then through the single crochet And now you can see that this is going to be the armhole. Of course, we'll clean up these edges later with some single crochet. That's not the armhole. That's the this will be on the top part of your arm. We'll make the armholes down here. So go ahead and go through that. Get it nice and tight, and then hide your tail. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get them tails hidden nice and tight so they're not going to come undone. Weave them in there good. So I'm going to go ahead and weave these tails in and we'll do the other side real quick. Okay, so we got that sewed on and this is kind of what it looks like so far here. I know it's hard to see, but you got the corner sewed up here and then this is part of the neck hole. So we're going to come over to the other side. Here's our corner that we sewed up over here. We're gonna count four shells in, so on both pieces, one, line them up, two, three, and four, and on that fourth shell, we're gonna sew it up just like we did the other side. So we go through the hole that the shells in on both pieces. And then back through the single crochet that's on top of both pieces. And remember, just do it the best that you can. But you want to do it several, several times until it's nice and tight. And don't worry about it looking a little bit rough now. We will clean it up, I promise. So I'm going to finish doing this and hide on my tails and then we'll start cleaning up the top real quick before we start sewing up the sides. Okay, I got them both so sewed up there. So we got the big neck hole because it's meant to drape a bit like that. So now we're going to, I'm going to go back to my hook and to my yarn. And I'm going to clean up these edges with, I'm going to go around the neck part first from this point where we sewed around the front here to the next point that we sewed and then around the back with single crochet. So um, you can start anywhere you want. I'm just going to start over here in the corner where we sewed, where we first started sewing up. I'm going to go in that same spot. 
and I'm going to pull my yarn through and I'm going to chain one. Now I'm, going to go, now I'm going to go into the same spot and also the same spot on the back. So the same spot that we were sewing in on the back piece. And again, it doesn't have to be extremely exact. Just do the best that you can to try to hit that back stitch that we were sewing up earlier. Single crochet like that. Now I'm going to separate the two pieces. That's so we just so those we just single crochet those two together. Now I'm going to work one single crochet and every stitch here across the front. And this is what's going to clean up this neck edge. Stitch count don't really matter. Just do the best that you can to try to hit every stitch. This yarn is um, it's really forgiving. If you make a mistake, it's not really, it's actually probably not noticeable at all, as long as it's not a huge mistake. So you want to work over until you get to where you sewed up the other part of the neck hole. all the way over to here. Okay, I've made it to where these two pieces are sewn together again. I'm just gonna go through right through both of the single crochets that we sewed them together with. The one on the front and the one on the back. Just try to hit it the best that you can. And then single crochet. Now I'm gonna flip it and start working around, along the back. So I'm just gonna jump to this stitch here single crochet and now this is going to clean up just one single crochet in every stitch just like we did across the front and this is going to clean up this back edge You can see that made that neck hole by doing it that way. It's all nice and clean looking. So I'm going to continue working, putting one single crochet in every stitch along the back of my piece, all the way across the back until we get over here to where we started our single crochet on the front here. I'm going to work all the way over here to the back. Okay, I've made it back around to my starting point. Now I started right over here in front. I'm right behind the stitch that I started. What I want to do is just jump right on over to that very first single crochet that we made and slip stitch into it. So we're jumping from the back to the front to the first single crochet that we made. Slip stitch in. And then you can clip that off. Hide that tail. And then we're going to do the same thing on this part of the armholes that we made. Just going to go around them and clean them up. So, let's start. I'm going to start over here in the corner. Um, since we just grabbed the two stitches that you can grab here on the end. The very last one if you can get it on both, if not the second to the last. Doesn't have to be perfect. Go through both of them. Chain one. Go back into the same stitch. 
single crochet. Now we separate and we start going along this piece only, working one single crochet in every stitch until we get over here to the start of our neck hole. Remember this is our arm, the top portion of our arm. Okay, I'm coming up over here. This is where our neck hole starts, so. It's gonna be a bit of a Okay, we've made it over here to where this is where the neck hole starts. You can see that. What you want to do is grab see these first two single crochets here go through them both like that and slip stitch like that and then flip your work around that way it's connected to the neck it doesn't look like it's separated any turn it back around turn it to the other side and then continue single crocheting along the back side of the arm top of the arm piece and remember I just I can't stress enough it doesn't have to be perfect here because I know these stitches are extremely hard to see sometimes this yarn isn't the easiest to work with but I did say that it is very forgiving if you miss stitches so I'm going to continue working so that is what we got there. As you can see, you can see that it's uh, hooked together there. The edges are all cleaned up. So I'm going to continue along the back side until I get back over here to my starting point. Okay, I've made it to the end here. And what I want to do, I'm on the back side. I just want to jump to the front and slip stitch into my first single crochet. Just like we did for the neck hole. And then we want to hide, clip that yarn. Hide that tail, and then we do the same thing to the other top of the arm piece. So, I kind of pull it out as you look. So, those edges are all nice and cleaned up. So, here's your neck hole right here. And right here is the top of the arm, which your arm, top of your arm will be exposed. Now, all, after you do the other side over here, exactly the same way, go around that, clean up all the edges. All it's left to do is sew up the sides. Go ahead and do that real quick show you how <clears throat> now you can leave as big as of a space that you need for your armhole but I'm gonna use a yarn needle and a piece of yarn and I'm just gonna neatly sew up the side both sides the same so I have the right side of my work facing me we've had it facing us the whole time I am going to leave 11 shells open for the armhole. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to work on my 12th one. Now, you can leave as many as you want or as few as you want. So, So I got a bit pretty nice size armhole. So the only most important part of this is to make sure you keep your shells lined up the whole way down. So it doesn't look off at all. So make sure you count and you, you skip however many you're skipping. I'm skipping 
11, 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, okay. Make sure it's the same on both sides. And you just grab your pieces. I'm starting on my 12th shell right here. All I'm going to do is sew it up. Not back and forth, which you could do if you wanted to. I'm going to go, or not over the top. You could do that if you wanted. I'm going to neatly go back and forth. And just remember, it's very important to keep the shells lined up. And I'm just going through these double crochets here on the side. It's, that's what I'm sewing it up with. And I'm going to do this all the way down on both sides. If we want small, you have to make sure and look that your shells are staying lined up. I kind of like to put my fingers in between the double crochets like that. That way I know my shells are staying lined up. Now once you go down it, if you want to go back up it again to make ensure that it's tight, that's fine too. But just sew it up as neatly as you can. All the way down. Just make sure your shells are always lined up. Otherwise, when you come to the bottom, your piece isn't going to be even. So I'm going to work all the way down, sewing this side up, and then I'm going to go to the other side and sew it up. Now remember, you could leave the as many spaces open that you wanted for your armhole, just depending on, you know, the size of your armhole. The size, the size of your arm. You could have left more or less, you know, that was up to you. So I'm going to finish. See, we're getting it all sewed up now. Slowly, but surely. I'm going to go all the way down this side, all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to skip my 11 shells and start on my 12th one, sew it up too, and then we'll have our armholes done. Okay, once you get both sides sewed up, which I did, all the way down to the bottom, hide all your tails. You got your, got both uh, parts of your arm portion cleaned up and your neck portion cleaned up. And that is it. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. And I can wear this uh, probably a lot of ways. Um, under a tank top or <clears throat> over a bathing suit. Under a t-shirt. Uh, or over a t-shirt. Uh, put a belt around it. You know, however you want to wear it. It's probably pretty versatile. Just whatever you think. Either side that you like better you can put in the front. They both look pretty good, so that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, I hope you're able to follow along okay. And also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And check out all my other tutorials. I have hundreds of them on YouTube. And until next time, have a good day.